Conspiracies, government cover-ups, Earth mysteries, monster cryptids. Hospital Porter's pride and dignity. Stop the new world order. Welcome to Her Panwo TV and welcome to this, the 94th reply to comments video. The reason I make these videos is because, as the title suggests, it's where I reply to your comments. Now, um, I get a lot of comments on my video, being a, my videos, being a popular channel, and I feel obliged to reply to because people take trouble to write a good comment, and some of them are very complimentary, some of them are very helpful, some of them are, thought, are very thought out and interesting and educational for me. So I feel obliged to reply. I don't have time to reply by text, so I uh, I reply to these comments reply videos. And you say, well, that's a bit useless, Ben. <laughs> Why do I? Well, this is not a good way to reply to comments. I, you know, you, you I want you to answer my comment, but I don't have to watch a nine-hour video to do it. You don't have to for two reasons. Firstly, I will put a little template reply under the comment I'm replying to with a timestamp to within the nearest hour of the next comments reply video. I'm going to reply to your comment. And, uh, the, and second reason is, my reply to comments are no longer nine hours long, or plus, nine hours plus. Um, I think on record was 11 hours once. Um, they're much shorter these days, and that's because I do them more often. Um, I usually do, I try to do them every two weeks. Another reason is, I enjoy doing them, and they're, they're fun. And um, you guys, you enjoy them too. You, Some of you, I know, watch them all the way through. So that's why I do these reply to comments videos. It's a bit late this one actually. I was hoping to do this maybe on Easter Sunday or yesterday. Um, I didn't. I was probably on Sunday. I went out for dinner with my dad, and um, I ended up getting home, and I was I was a bit tipsy, and I was very tired. And so I, by the time I finished it, I didn't have the energy. Yesterday I had to do third rail. I was I was going to do a bit of recording after third rail, but I was, it was a lot of technical problems in the recording. Uh, I ended up fin finishing about an hour late, and again. I was too tired, so uh, it's just a couple of days late, this video, so apologies for that, ladies and gentlemen, viewers of all descriptions. So um, what I'll do is I've got a timestamp here, and I'll start replying to your comments that was left since the end of the last, which are, what, which are not covered by the last reply to comments video. <clears throat> so we go straight back to reply to comments 93, a pr previous reply to comments video. Gary Robinson says, evening, bro, pride and dignity. Pride and dignity to you, bro. And we have another second one. J Gary Robertson gets the gold tinfoil hat for the first comment. J Jam Noise 72 gets the silver. Hi, bro. That's the second comment. Hi, hi, Soul Sister. How you doing? And we have Michelle S. who says damage control time. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Gary Robinson says, Have you watched Dune 2 yet, mate? I've not seen it yet, but a film threat is saying the parts 1 and 2 together make for a butt much better version of Dune. Um, Gary, no, I've not seen Dune 2. Um, I don't actually intend to. I'm sorry about this, but I was not impressed with Dune 1. Um, this is why I started the Dune Watch Read Live, uh, live Dune Watch Read Party. I've done the introduction. I've got to do the rest of it. Um, but the, the one, the film, uh, the film which is part of the watch bit of the Watch Read Party is the 1984 David Lynch adaptation, which I, con I consider far superior. So I've not watched it. I mean, I'm, I may watch it at some point, but you, may, you say it's better if you watch them to the two together. Well, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go, but I'm certainly not doing a review of it. Let alone, a re I'm not. I'm definitely not going to the cinema to do a roving review. Sorry about that. <coughs> um, and reply to comment seven to ninety three. We have Coda. I hope you don't want a medlo. Okay, here we go. What's with all the huffalo dowder with Professor Brian Cox Brian Coxloader? Deep folly. A deep folly. <laughs> he's he's a he's a dickhead. He's a dickhead loader. He's a tosser bowl. That's why. Anyway, um, Coda continues. Professor Coxloader is a paragon of integrity. A high high brain bocker and bookie learnage. Oh yes, no he's not. He's a he's a wanker. He's a fucking prick. <laughs> Don't know how you say that in Unwinnies. His voice bocker is deep bassy baritone and manly most. <laughs> he's a got a little gaily voice like that. I'm so I'm so intelligent and everyone else is a knobber. <laughs> what are you talking about? His groomage is most likely mainly manly managed testosterone with a huge salami pentaload and swing it about. <laughs> his groomage, meaning his hair, is probably preserved because he takes bloody anti-androgen drugs. 
just to stop hair loss. Apparently, it's what's made his voice the way it is. <laughs> um, his whiz, his whizdy and shouldery head above it, creates the soak it dust wind dude. I don't know what I mean. Sorry, with his whizdy and shouldery head above it, head and shoulders above it. Uh, the only head and shoulders thing about Professor Brian Cox is his shampoo. Um, Crazy Socket, Dust Wind Dude. Okay, I don't know what I mean. Sorry, Einstein Burt Loaders. All oh, right, that's Albert Einstein. Yeah, and a Hawkey Stevage. Yes, he's Stephen Hawking. Combine it and present you there. Oh yes, Derry my I'm Coda. You don't half look at this. You don't half look at the Coxhead Coxer through uh, through rose tinted glasses. You really do. I mean, oh my goodness me. My huffalo dowder with him. I can't stand the little bastard. I mean, he's, he's, he, he hates me just as much. He's always going about conspiracy theorists and nobbers. They're nobbers. <laughs> uh, and he's, he's, a, he's a BBC media whore. That's what he is. He's, he's, in the moment I saw him on that out there, out, they, they did a special BBC Horizon thing to, to celebrate the, two, uh, the 100th anniversary of special relativity. They had Einstein. And that's where Cox first appeared on there. And I looked at him and I thought, a star is born there. Yeah. They're going to turn him, and indeed they've made him a star. They've made him a mega star. He's now presenting all the science shows, including by, including um, Life on Earth, and and um, David Attenborough said he Cox was his natural successor, even though he's a particle physicist, not a biologist. Uh, and by mind, mind you, Attenborough's become like a one-world uh, population reduction guy, isn't he? Yeah. So yes, I'm very huffalo dowder with him. I must say. Hugo Roon, hey Hugo. Hi Ben and all. Looking forward to this. Spliffs in tin. Good man. All right. Well, I hope you're looking forward to this one. A little bit late, but better late than never. And Hugo says, enjoying this. Thank you, Ben. You're welcome, Hugo. And we have a coda again on um, Reply to Comments 93. Just like the ones that was the video Hugo's replying to. Now, now, Mr. Portage, all pridely dignifol there. <laughs> You know me, there's a spacey tie load to grab it the towage and throw it here. A spacey tie load to grab it the towage and throw it there. All right. Mumbloader is Karekas. Oh, yes. No, he's not. He's a knobhead. He's a steaming. He talks a load of steaming piles. The uh, the Kogreshi extravaganza. A Kogre Congressional extravaganza. Has all concluded and dash it any hope loads of a disclosing most? Oh yes, no it hasn't. No it hasn't. No no the the congressional he the congressional hearing was really brilliant. I mean what the problem was that basically some of the well there's some people in Congress, particularly the two mics and a couple of others, who are work basically working for Lockheed Martin or at least Lockheed Martin funded their uh, campaigns. And you know that when the devil uh, the devil demands payment. And um, they, they basically scuppered the Schumer Amendment. I've, I've done an entire video about this. I'm going to interview Steve Bassett tomorrow. There'll be another one soon. It has been proving most on the Ballacy scale loads that it's all a steam at dollop and pie load. No, it's not. No, it's not, Coda. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't been proved. Um, honestly, you, you, I did a, I covered it in my last. Rep I did a disclosure UFO disclosure video, didn't I? It's it's a step backwards, definitely. But I mean, if it was what you say it is, a a steam it dollop and pie load. I mean, I did this. this oh, sorry, this was my reply to Steve Mumbling, wasn't it? I actually made this point in my reply to Steve Mumbling. Why are they going to all this trouble and expense and an effort to just to to prevent investigation into something that doesn't exist? I mean, if, if say if Congress and Congress sort of lost their minds and they said well, we're going crazy, they had a bit too much of Hugo's wacky backy, and they went and said we're going to have an investigation into Santa Claus. <laughs> now, what would you do? What you, the, the the right thing to do in in political in the political world is just to humour them, just humour them, let them get on with it. Now, that way, they, they they make fools of themselves, and no one else gets no one else gets egg on their face. You know, the the actual. The bill to the taxpayer is much lower. Just, just let them do it, and, but not at least because there's plenty of people who would like, you know, the political opponents who would like them to see them get egg on their face. You know, I mean, um, do, do, do you think, you know, AOC um, would be, would, would uh, actually say, oh no, no, that Matt Gates, 
I want to. I want to defend his honour. Do you really think that Alexandria, occasionally courteous, would want that? Would she stand up for Matt Gates and prevent him looking like a fool? Of course not. <laughs> she. <laughs> anyway, I'll continue. continue on. Commiserales, sheddy tear, and all such pleasant trails. But as they say, it's not the winnage, but the takely part load. <laughs> It's not the winning, it's the taking part. Now, there's no need for commiserails or any tears sheddied. Honestly, um, you'll see, you'll see. I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen my video with Steve mumbling. I mean, you know that I challenged him on this. I really did. Hmm. And then we have Summer Sizzler. Oh, this is an old one, but a good one. This is, this is my... Uh, the one I did with Sophie the Porter's poet. Oh, yes. Changely seasonage. I read it already in yards and garbages, in the far flummery corns of the realm, 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 Britty men, Britly men, British men, all right, the realm, corners of the realm, <laughs> with knotty hander flopper on the noggin. Oh, hanker flop, hanker flop, oh, knotted handkerchiefs, <laughs> grey socks, and sand loaders. Oh, oh, this is a, yeah, and um, factor 30 Fido sun blockage, hmm. Are finally up, are fiery up the barbecue. Yeah, not the hand flop, hanker, hanker flopper on the noggin. Grey socks, sandalo, sandaloaders, all chickly drumstickles, and saucies burn it on the outside with bacterioles and undercookly meat. Deep, deep folly. Yeah, um, I, last time I had a barbecue in the barbecue in the flummery corns. Corms, I uh, sat on the toilety load for about two days. Deep, deep folly. Yes. Dave Yorkshire says on Applied Comics 93, I agree with, you, agree with you about Dawkins, who is a religious zealot for militant atheism and the New World Order, as I showed in one of my videos about his stance on, co on the C word. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, Richard Dawkins is, yeah, he's he's too thick to realise it, though, too up himself. Um, I don't agree about the UFOs, though. I think the opposite, that the elites want you to believe it's aliens because it's a convenient cover for big tech. A friend of mine saw one of those triangles up in northern Scotland back in the early 90s. We both came to the same conclusion. It was early drone technology. By the way, have you seen the S Spice Diver Fan edit of June's Lynch? It's the best version I've seen. No, I haven't seen the S Spice Diver Fan. Oh, that's the Spice Machine. I haven't seen that, no. But, I mean, as far as the UFO issue goes, I mean, what you've just said is actually not very original, David. It's, um... It's actually quite a fashionable idea now that it's a convenient cover for big tech, but it doesn't work. I mean, it's I, I suspect there's a double bluff going on here, uh, and the people and the, a lot of the people going around saying what you're saying. I think it's kind of like playing it's playing their game a little bit. Um, if you look at it theoretically, how 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 on earth is it going to work? What, why would they do this? Why would they say, look, um, here is. Here is this thing over here. Come and look at it. Come and look at Area 51. Bob Lazar came out and talked about Area 51. Everyone, you've got to come and look at it. Look at it everywhere. Look at the aliens that might be there. So, so everyone crowds to Area 51. Because, because to, and Area 51 was unknown before Bob Lazar, let's face it. And then, and then suddenly, what the, the fact of the matter is, you're developing a secret spy plane there. And there's no aliens. But you don't want people looking at the spy plane. So you draw someone's attention towards something with the objective of deflecting it away. Well, it hasn't worked very well, has it? If you think about it, it's worked pretty badly. I mean, Area 51 is now on the tourist trail from Las Vegas. I went there myself. And um, not only that, but, um, you know, a lot of the people who go there, you know, you, you, you might argue, yes, but they're all going there looking for aliens. They're not going to see the spy plane. Well, some of them are, some of them are not, though. Look at Jörg Arnu, who runs the Dreamland Resort website. He went there, <laughs> and he lives in Rachel, actually. He's a German guy, lives in Rachel. <coughs> and he doesn't believe in aliens. He's interested in the secret, he's interested in the secret aircraft. <coughs> but he wouldn't have heard about the plagues <coughs> if it hadn't been for all this fuss. So, it's a pretty bad way of covering something up. It's like a, if you imagine a bank robber. Two bank robbers. Both of them rob a bank and run off with their stash of money. One of them goes and hides it in the middle of the woods, buries it under a tree, makes a note of what the tree looks like, goes away and doesn't tell anyone about it. 
The other one doesn't, though. The other one buries it, under, buries it, then then puts on a pink tutu and a striped jersey and a carries a bag mark swag, and then jumps up and down on top of it and wave it. And every time a police a policeman goes past, he says, "Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Policeman. Hello, over here. Look at me. Look at me, Mr. Policeman. There's no buried money here from a bank robbery. Okay, just unicorn bones." Which of those two stashes is going to be found first? Which of those two bank robbers is going to be caught first? It's obvious, isn't it? The second one. Area 50, if, if I was in charge of Area 51, I'd be cursing the very people who came up with this idea. And for you to be correct, this would have to have been done over and over again for decades. It doesn't make sense. It's, I think it's a double bluff. So yeah, there are aliens. The elites don't want us to believe in aliens. They, they put out this idea that so there's no aliens, we're just covering up the big tech stuff deliberately. And certain, certain people um, sort of promote it. You know, there's some of them, I think, are, are well-meaning, gullible, naive people like Richard D. Hall, Andrew Johnson. Ooh, call a backslapper naive, and they hate the, and that's, they, that really makes them angry. Um, others, I think, are more sinister and um, I think have an have a agenda in, in hand, I think. Um, certain people like who were in the Mirage Men documentary. By the way... Um, Mark Pilkington, who directed Durant and Mirage Men and read the, wrote the book, he's also fallen for this. So, no, it's, it's, it's a simple mistake to make, David. A lot of people do, but I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you at all. Um, moving on, we have Mark B. on Reply to Comments 93. If my common sense needs any pr improvement, I mask it by being incredibly attractive to women and a great mover on the dance floor. I'm also a very modest man. Hmm. Sounds a bit like me. <laughs> don't think it helps my common sense, but uh, I often do that, definitely. Same video, um, TK says, on TK UK, says, uh, first, first right here, Ben, first right here, Ben, Benjamin, <laughs> first right here, Benjamin, all oh, right, uh, I don't know what you mean, TK. Marky Boy says, I'm replying to comments 93, great video, thank you, Marky Boy, I just realized I don't have the timer. I'll have to keep checking. Been going for 17 minutes. All right. And now we have um, uh, reply to comments 93. We, oh, we got a comment here from Gary. In regards to the whole British-English thing that Hugo mentioned, uh, around 20 years ago, I had to go to an embassy in London to apply for a work-related document. I won't say for which country, but you could probably guess. And it's got anything to do with the, the old married life, Gary? Hmm. The guy who dealt with my request in their office was extremely aggressive and became even more so when I referred to myself as British or English. He slammed the forms down on the desk, looked me in the eye and said, England doesn't exist, get it? He was making the point that according to his country, people from England are only allowed to use the term UK and nothing else. He then told me to get out before I changed my mind. Nice bloke, cheers. Bloody heck, and I compl I'd complain to the High Commissioner about him, what a dickhead. Um, so, if he thinks that people from England are only allowed to say UK, well, in his country, then I'm afraid he's got it completely wrong. There's a lot of people who self-identify as English, more than ever now, probably as a resistance to the whole, oh, you're a racist thing. Anyway, Gary says here, P.S. I eventually received the document, but it took over a year to arrive in the mail. Bloody ass. They probably delayed it for as long as possible. What a, what a twat. What a, what a cocksloader that guy is. Hmm. All right, um, Gary Robinson. Ben, you mentioned the scum, scum being a movie about a skinhead, but I think the f film you are, I think the film you are thinking of is Made in Britain as Tim Roth. Yes, as a skinhead in that movie. Yes, yes, I do. That's the one I meant. Yeah, both films were directed by Alan Clark, who made a number of controversial movies, including Rita Sue and Bob Two. Yes, Rita Sue and Bob Two. Rita Sue and Bob. That's right. Yes, that's Rita Sue and Bob Two. That has the most memorable opening line in the history of any script to come out in the history of cinema. <clears throat> Do either of you two girls know how to put on a Johnny? <laughs> Scum is often thought as a video nasty. However, the original idea behind it was for them to create a trilogy showing the story of a boy who ends up in Borstal, leaves and joins the army and eventually becomes a police detective. After visiting Borstal as part... Excuse me... As part of their research, Alan Clark and Roy Minton were so shocked at what they found they ended up 
making the movie to expose what they saw as, as a corrupt system. That's the one. I've seen that film too, the one about the boy in the Borstal, yeah. The BBC banned it, and a few years later it was remade with most of the original cast for a theatrical release. The BBC, original BBC version was released for the first time on DVD in 2005, and is even more shocking than the theatrical version. Cheers. Right, I've not, I, don't, I don't think I've seen that version. I might have done. I saw it on YouTube. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Here we go. Um, Replied comments 93. Hey, Ben, you mentioned that Neil Sanders is still one of RDH's favourites. Is that the case even after the the Standard stabbed him on the back on national TV? Gary, I suspect not. I really do. I really suspect not. I mean, um, you, to fall out with Richard, you only have to disagree with him a little bit. I mean, if, after what Neil did, uh, imagine Richard sticks sticks pins in his photo. I mean, um, Neil, I, I actually think, believe it or not, I actually think Neil meant well. I think Neil was trying to help him, um, which was rather a rather forlorn effort and he should have known better but um if you want to help richard just don't say a bloody word to the bbc tell him to get lost hmm. and uh, gary says here on reply to comments 93 i noticed a comment on the last comments reply video from roy bland they're telling me to stop posting comments about woke media i was going to reply and i'm glad i didn't as i wasn't aware he was one of the droik trolls gary it's, it's, the, the droiks just disguise themselves very well i mean they're quite they 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 can't hold their poise forever, but they begin by putting, you know, coming across as someone different, you know. And but anyway, yeah. I mean, you could reply to him if you want. I mean, it was he. It was a comment he made on Rumble that convinced me who he was. And then when, and then after a while, I told him. He says, "Look, you are um, because he there's someone on YouTube with the same name. I was, was almost certain it was the same person. He denied it, but then." His behaviour indicated he was, so I, so I blocked him. All right, M Mark B says on reply to comments 93, there was a shipment of 20, 221 kilograms of lithium uh, lithium batteries being transported on MH370. Was that the cause of all the mystery surrounding its demise? Just imagine the possibility. Sorry, the possible bad salty rep EVs. Could have got God if that had been headline news. I mean, it's not as if there have been incidents on these milk floats suffering thermal events, is it? Oh wait, yeah, it was actually. Well, see, the story varies between 221 and 900 kilograms. Um, could that be the cause of the mystery surrounding its demise? Yes, I mean, as I as I said in the video, it is possible that this that the whole thing was an accident, and and the the whole mystery the engine the old mystery of surrounding it was engineered just to avoid the liability it's, it was simply an accident and someone decided that we can't have like stories of lithium iron batteries burning up in, in our passenger plane it was bad enough with the dubai fire in 2010 as i explained you know this, this was a cargo plane full of lithium batteries uh which caught fire and they the the wreckage is incredible there's virtually nothing left of the airframe um everyone on board was killed and luckily that was only three people uh, a couple of pilots and a guy looking after the looking after the cargo but um the the, the actual airframe was totally and utterly incinerated um by the fire on, on a passenger plane you can imagine the, the casualty rate being much worse um so yeah the salty rep evs could get i think it's possible that they just didn't want that they just didn't want those headlines so they came up with some cock and bull story about a pilot going crazy and flying the plane out into the middle of the Indian Ocean. I really think they did. That's it. Hmm. And we have Mark B. Again, on same video. I know Brian Cox is an actor. Yeah, come on, Ben. Ha <laughs> ha. I was talking about the gorgeous cue shot of him standing wistfully on a dune in the Sahara as the camera pans out. The gorgeous Brian Cox, our resident BBC scientist. He's a paid actor, a fully signed up member of the satanic cult that runs everything. Well, I mean, um, Mark, to, uh, to be fair, I don't think he... Pr I think he probably is too narrow-minded to understand what's really going on. I think he's a useful idiot. If I'm cynical, it is due to the event of March 2020 and the ever-increasing human agendas being pushed into overdrive, overdrive since that point. Yeah, um, I'm uh, cynical. Well, I'd say cynical in a way. It's, it's a relief to get it all out in the open, quite frankly. Everything is inverted, which is the satanic 
I would as far go as far as to say that everything these rep, anything these reptiles tell you is the opposite of what is true. They are attempting to make themselves gods by making everything synthetic, all things artificial, so as to run this realm. All natural god or higher creator things must be contaminated and replaced. Yes, basically, that's a good way of putting it. People are free to flame on me, but remember, I was an atheist up until the event. There's no doubt a satanic hand at play here. Um, even if it's just fiction, they believe it and it's made real. Sorry, that's a bit long. No, it's alright, Mark. I actually agree with you. I think that is a summary of what the Illuminati do. That's what they are. Um, we have Mark B again on the same video. On the subject of our economy, of course, 2020 was planned. Even with my high school CSE, could, even my high school CSE, I could call out what was going to happen. Yeah, Mark, um, I, I thought so too. But I, I didn't know when exactly, but I knew there would be a massive backlash against 2016. There had to be. I said so at the time. I said, you know, the deep state is going to, is going to ex explode over this, and there's going to be there's going to be a, retali a retaliatory strike at some point, point. and it happened in early 2020, as you said. Mark continues, we live in a fiat system, but the ancients use a jubilee system. Reason being, they knew that fiat, interest-based system, would eventually fail. I c cannot discount the possibility that the dollar collapsed in 2008, and we would not see the result for a few years. <coughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, they knew this. They knew, they have an idea of a great reset, which they're using, because they know very well the, debt, the debts can never be paid off. Um, the amount of credit, raw, you know, credit in circulation compared to raw capital is like a hundred to one now. There's, there's literally, we, we would literally have to sell Jupiter to the aliens to pay off this debt. We would. That debt's going to have to be, as you said, cancelled. It has to be a jubilee. That's the original meaning of the word jubilee, by the way. Look at the trillions lost a day before 9/11. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the put options. Trillions were lost, but well, according to uh, according to Skeptic of the North, how do you know that? Think about it. How do you know that? Well, I'm I don't actually have that information to hand right now. But there's definitely you you know the, the put options. People made money as well off 9/11. You cannot keep pumping money into the system as it will implode at some point. Think about it. Where are all the billions going being pumped into Ukraine? They're going up Zelensky's nose. The jubilee system used in previous cultures meant that at certain historic event times, a line was drawn through all the debt and the decks were cleared. Funny thing is, signs of war are non-existent in the remains of long-lost civilizations. Yeah, well, there was some... Um, mm, it's... Uh, sorry, someone just texted me. On the subject, there, there was well, there were wars in um, there were sometimes limited wars in um, long lost civilizations, but they tended to be very different to the types fought today. They tended to be confined to a warrior caste, so they were more like some kind of competition, some kind of very uh, brutal blood sport, rather than the kind of war, the total war you see today, where we plan to like obliterate entire cities with nukes or drop uh, poison gas on people and things like that. But yeah, I mean that the. the uh, Obviously, there was in the pre-Illuminati world, there were much more healthy ways of dealing with this sort of thing. I'm mean, a good, a good person to look at. Is Kev, of all people, Kevin Annett, because he he was uh, he got a degree in Indian studies, and he talked, he learned about the, the natives of North America and how their society worked with things. These, this, things like that. This was a pre-Illuminati civilization that persisted until the arrival of the conquistadors, basically in in the in the 16th century. Yeah. Okay, um, reply to comments 93, Tessa 1111, I hope, hope the coder language, or whatever it's called, isn't just a private club, leaving those of us who never knew it out, out, clicky, a bit, I feel excluded, oh Tessa, that's not intentional, Look, um, what, what coder is doing, coder is speaking Unwinese, which is a, it's a comedy dialect invented by Stanley Unwin, the comedian, um, and it's just the way he likes to talk. It's a bit of fun. It's not intended to exclude anyone. And indeed, I will translate whenever possible. And if you read it for long enough, you can eventually learn to understand it. Or if you listen to it, you can learn to understand it. It's actually not that. It's not that difficult. Tessa also says on Reply to Comments 93. Oh, I'll put a timestamp there. 
How am I doing for time, actually? I've been going for 30 minutes on this segment. I, I'll use, I will use that. I will use the. Uh, I will use the thing afterwards. Oh, there's a. Oh, Coder's replied. <laughs> So I didn't. I didn't see it. Coda replied. I only only spotted Coda's reply when I added my reply. And he says here in reply to Tessa, "It's a sisty of communicale for deeply most codage and secret survey infamale There, oh yes, all noddly winket, stately whisperings. Don't tell the vicar. Not so much a gentle mode clubbage, rather a stone cuttery, trousy, roll it to the knee clapper and brassly exposed there." <laughs> Yeah, it's a test. If you didn't understand that, it's a system of communi deep communication and code for secret service information. Um, nod, nod, wink, wink. Don't tell the vicar. Not so much gentleman club, rather than a stone cutter's roll up trousers to the knees and expose the breast thing. You know, like the Freemasons or like the stone cutters is the Simpsons. You ever, you ever seen the um, oh that fantastic episode of the Simpsons where Homer joins the he joins the Freemasons. Uh, they're, they're called the stone cutters, you know, cutting stone, mason, get it? And um, Patrick Stewart is is in there as the Grand Master, he, he's, and he's uh, he, there's this sacred parchment, he says. Oh, it's a hilarious episode if you've not seen it. And it's got that song, who controls the British crown, who keeps the metric system down, we do, we do. I used to sing that with Louisa when she was little, when she was a little baby. And it's funny because she could, she was, she couldn't really sing properly because she hadn't learned to talk properly. But she, when we got to the we do bit, she used to go we do, we do. She used to love singing along to that. So there's your explanation, Tessa. And Tessa says here on the same video, <clears throat> Whitley Streber's Grey on the cover of Communicant Cum Commune made Greys very popular. The movie had it, Christopher Walken in it. The movie had Christopher Walken in it. Yes, I've seen the film. It's it's a really good movie. Um. Uh, now, of course, Whitley is, is a well-known figure in this field. That did popularise the idea of greys. However, greys existed before then, as I explained um, when uh, Brian Dunning tried to pretend that um, you know the grey aliens didn't exist before tw 1977, because that's when they were invented, quote-unquote, by Steven Spielberg in Close Encounters. Although Robbie Graham got managed to get in touch with the production designer of Close Encounters, who said uh, and said to him, uh, you know, where did you get these? Where did you get the idea for those those grey aliens? And he says, oh, it's very simple. I phoned up one of the people who sees them. So they, he contacted the production designer, contacted alien abductees to design the movies. Probably, I bet Heineck probably put him in touch with one of them. Heineck was a consultant and appears briefly in the film as a cameo. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's so what Dunning has done, he's completely put the cart before the horse. The, the, the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind did not invent greys. It popularised the idea of greys, which already existed in ufological literature. And the same, I think, goes for communion. Okay, Aerojet says here, on, oh, hang on, oh, it's a thread, sorry. Oh, this is Don Jolly's Conspiracy Show, right. Hugo Rune says, hi, Ben and all. Hi, Hugo. And Stephen says, Steve 71 says, Evening, Hugo. Dark Corners says, Hi, Hugo. Hugo Rune says, Steve, thank you, and mine is banned. Hi, B to you, too, DC. Hi, Hugo. And Aerojet says, Hi, Hugo. Aerojet says, Hi, Hugo. And Hugo Rune says, Hi, Aero. Hope you're doing well. Oh, so lovely. I was just a thread where everyone's just saying hello. This is nice. Uh, Big Dangerous Dan. Hey, Dan. How you doing? Who says here on... Uh, Dom Jolly's conspiracy show. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Kurt Cobain, a lyric from the 90s. That's right. Kurt did in indeed say, um, just because they're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after Gout to get you or something like that. And he later on um, sadly took, he shot himself, unfortunately. He's very sad. Or did he? Soaked in bleach, says David, splendid isolation. <coughs> and Big Dangerous Dan says to David, when I was an alien, culture was opinions. Right, I think these are probably references to Nirvana lyrics, which I don't know that well. I mean, I do, I do like Nirvana, but I didn't know, I don't know their, um, I didn't know them that well. Hmm. It's two weeks since it's more than two weeks since I went to see, since I went to see Dom Jolly, isn't it? Yeah. 
<coughs> Raven Hill, the cryptic of 1968, says, Good evening, Ben. I used to enjoy, enjoy Dom Jolly's Trigger Happy TV during the 90s. It was funny, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was funny. It was kind of like, it was like, um, it was it was like Jeremy Beadle, except it was it was funnier. It was much, much better, I think. Much better than Beadle. And certainly, it's, it's kind of in the tradition of Candid Camera, that kind of thing. Same video, Neil Peel says, You're pumping out more material on your channel than a, than a corrupt BBC News propaganda broadcast. Oh, Neil, I try to keep up with them. I'm glad if I am. All right, Crazy Plain Lady update. Right, Barbarian says, Barbarian646 says, Where's the link, please, Ben, to your original first response to this? All right, now, I had a, I had a text conversation with Barbarian over this because he wanted to know where the, the link was to the to the the video the the first video in this series because this is a vid update video and I said to it Barbarian it can be found in the description box and Barbarian says the first of Panmo link now at this point I I became a bit irritable I'm, I'm maybe I, I should apologize I shouldn't have but I ended up saying to him there are two background links there are two background links only try them both and so Barbarian I mean I I appreciate you watching, I really do, and I appreciate your interest in this subject and your desire to watch these videos. But, um, I don't know, I felt I was, I felt I was, you were sort of demanding that I spoon feed you a bit. You know, well, which one is, it's, you say, where's the link? And I tell you where the link is, I said, it's in the description box of the video. The first of Panamo link, because there are two links there, and I, there's one, one of them is, um, let's have a look, um, one, I put, there were two links. Yeah, there was there was one which was uh, the first, and then there was a second one which is the David Icke portal. There was the the background video which is the first crazy plain lady video, and then there was the the David Icke portal. And it actually says you can actually see in the URL. It's not a hyperlink. It's you can actually read it in the in the URL. It's just a bare URL which says crazy plain lady HTML, and there's David Icke portal HTML. Um, and you said, well, is it the first one or the second one? And I'm like. I said there were two background links only. Try them both. That's, I, so I was a little bit irritated with Barbarian because I felt he was being too demanding and he wanted me to spoon feed him things. And and um, if that's unfair, Bar Barbarian, I really do apologise to you because I, I appreciate you wanting to take an interest in what I do. And I mean, I, 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 the reason I felt I think I might have been a bit too intolerant was I've recently fallen out with somebody, somebody I knew for a long time, and uh, regular viewers will probably guess who this is. But um, this was somebody who I had a, I found was quite difficult to get on with, even even though they, I didn't have a problem with them for, for most of the time. They would sometimes appear, often on the Panama radio chats, and they'd start saying things like, "Oh, can you?" I'd say, "Well, can you get, can you get me a link to what you're talking about?" So I'd provide them with a link to a page with a number of radio shows on it, and he'd say he'd say something like, "But which one is it?" Um, it says there there were there were lots of them on here, and I and I'll be saying to him, I'm not going to name this person, but I'll be saying to him, look, just could, can't you just look for it yourself? Can't you, can't you just look yourself and see? Look, all the radio shows have names on. They'll tell you which one it is. There's only five of them. You can work out which one it is. I've given you the title of the show. Why don't you look for yourself? And I get, I get to the point. I was getting almost get to the point. I was almost getting to the point where I was saying to this person, look, could you just move your eyes further down on the monitor? And I was like, and um. I felt like he was he was being a bit needy. He was being needy and and like a little baby crying, you know. Go, I want this. I want my bottle now. I want to be changed now. Things like that. And whenever I got a bit sharp with him, he then he just he just immediately leave the chat box and go and sulk for about a week, and then he come back. And he, and in the one day I did this, and a week later he came back and carried on his recrimination. I just said, look, I've had enough of you. Go away. Every time I spoke to this guy, I started. I came away feeling really drained. I felt he was like, uh, I really did felt he was, he was difficult to talk to. He sent, he, I felt he was sucking energy out of me. And so this is why probably I was a bit too hard. I was a bit, I spoke too harshly to Barbarian. Okay, the answer is Barbarian. It's the first one. It's the one where it says, see here for background. And there's, there's uh, hapanmotv.blogspot.com and then crazy plain lady. It's that one. All right. So uh, I hope you found it interesting. I really do. And Barbarian says on, on the Crazy Plain Lady update as well, hmm, sounds to me like she's been threatened. Yeah. Um, she may well have been. She's certainly either been threatened or bribed or something like that. Yes. Dom Jolly, Davis Blended Isolation, says, 
Sinister literally means left in Latin. Sinister and dexter, left and right. Mm. Uh, it's from the... Um, it's like Carry On Cleo. Sinister, dexter, sinister, dexter. You've got the marching troops. <coughs> That's why the right hand is synonymous with honesty, integrity, and rightness, righteousness. That's right. In fact, um, my name is a, is a biblical name. As you know, Benjamin was the second son of Jacob. And um, Joseph was the, the guy with the coat, the coat of many colours, the Technicolor dream coat. And Benjamin was his, uh, his, his the second son. And uh, Simon was the favourite. and or Joseph was the favourite. And then Benjamin was the... It was Simon the father, sorry, and then Benjamin was the second son. Benjamin means son of the right hand. Mm. Even that word is all baked in, literally right and wrong, right side, left side. The ancient world understood the difference. In the Bible, you'll find over and over at his right hand, by his right hand. Yeah, it is fitting today that the left are on the side that is literally sinister, for a literally, for a literally sinister reason. Yes, that is, I mean, left has always been associated like that way. Maybe because most people are right-handed. In fact, um... If you were left-handed in the times of the witch burnings, you, you could end up on the stake for being left-handed. You, know, you could um, have to train yourself not to be, and you can do that, actually. Yeah, a Dom Jolly. Frog Scotch says, he's insufferable. Glad you were able to sit through it, because I couldn't sit through that sanctimonious prick show. Uh, he, I suppose he is a bit, but you see, he's quite funny. I do, I do find him quite funny. He's not like Cox. I mean, he's not a sanctimonious prick. Like, see, Professor Brian Cox is a, is a humorless... A narcissist, whereas Dom Jolly is kind of um, a, quite a funny, outgoing kind of narcissist, or, or maybe not a narcissist, but I, I thought he's quite. I did think he was quite amusing. I did. Um, right. The frog stop scotch says here on the same video. Dom did a video for Ian Brown. He won't be too happy with Ian's views on injectables for the. Uh, you know what crisis of 2020? Hmm. Ian Brown. Which one's Ian Brown? Um. But I mean, oh yeah. I mean, Don Jolly was really having a go, laying into the anti-V words, of course. Again, because he was. I can make. I can have a laugh at people if I can. Contact times. Are you David? Are you are you David? The David who, who's sort of like very elusive. I'm intrigued by this. Says contact times. Given both the, these characters are from my past wacky era. Any link to what went on between them, or are you just causing trouble and making it up? Oh, Ian Brown, right? I don't, I don't know Ian Brown. Hmm. And Frog Scotch says, Jolly did the video for Brown's track Golden Gaze. Brown was one of the only artists publicly to question the you-know-what. No wonder seeing as he's been calling out such a thing for decades in his lyrics. Next time I ask a stranger online a question, I'll mind you use, I'll mind and use your technique of accusation of causing trouble for the uh, person, uh, for to the person I'm asking at contact times. Yeah, contact times are a little bit <laughs> causing trouble or making it up. You sound a bit argumentative there, contact times. But who is Ian Brown? Let's have a look. So I've never heard of this person. If this is, is this a conspiratorial person, Ian? Whoops. Ian Brown, singer and multi multi instrumentalist. Oh right, Ian Brown. Oh right, is um, he looks familiar. I've seen him somewhere. Yeah. Oh, oh, he was in the he was in the Stone Roses. Right. Oh, Colin probably knows him. Yeah, I know. I thought that must have been where I've seen him. Stone Roses. Yeah. Um. Uh, hmm. Let's have a look. Personal life. He married Fabiola Quiroz, a model from Mexico. All oh, right. He's a lifelong supporter of Manchester United. Yeah. Legal issues. He was jailed for four months for threatening a British Airways stewardess on a flight to Manchester from Paris. Oh, blimey. As I said, don't underestimate the trolley dollies. Mm. Brown believes in God, but does not subscribe to an organised religion. During the C word, P word in the UK, he promoted conspiracy theories and misinformation. Oh, gold. I see what you mean, yeah. So Dom Jolly did a, a video for him. Right, that explains who, who Ian Brown is. I thought I'd, I didn't recognise the name, but the moment I saw him, I thought, yeah, I've seen that guy before somewhere. Torengen says on Dom Jolly's. Finland do not exist, does not exist. I think that's a take from the historical fact that Finland was not a country, but only a part of Sweden for hundreds of years. Um, now, it's it's true, that um, that's true. And then, of course, Finland was then part of the Russian Empire. It was actually uh, Lenin gave Finland independence, 
which it has had ever since. Well, at least until now, when it's become another lapdog of NATO. But yeah, um, even it, even it was one Swede that saved the Finnish language and wrote down the Epos Kaviala. Really? Did Finnish always di almost die out as a language? Because that does happen. Um, Cornish always uh, almost died out. Let's have a look. Because um, I'm interested. In, I mean, I'm interested in language. Did it almost die out? Finnish. Um, Finnish language. I know it's not Indo-European. It's a Uralic language of the Finnic branch. Yeah. Uh, classification, general distribution. Hmm. Oh, it's spoken in parts of Sweden as well, and, and indeed a large part of it blows loads of people in the north, in uh, the sort of north area of, of Norway and Sweden also speak Finnish. Prehistory. Hmm. But it's, I'm just looking through these um, things here. Um, um, it's, just, it's, it's quite long. There's a, there's a pretty long... Um, there's a pretty um, long, long article here. Mm, but um, did it almost die out at one point? Hmm. Oh right, there's a there's this, there's a beer bottle. I'll show you this. This is this looks quite funny. <laughs> there's this beer bottle here. Anyone who speaks Finnish will be able to know this. But um, this is an example example of the vers versatility of Finnish inflection. The label of this beer bottle reads, and there's some words in there's a there's a sentence in Finnish meaning, "Should I return to my ex or burn in hell?" I don't fucking know. <laughs> the same word can either mean "Should I return" or "Should I burn," depending. on whether it is inflected from palata to return or palata to burn. All right, could cause some confusion that. There's other examples in English, of course, uh, like that, where there's some, there's confusion, you know, with, um, you know, the, 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 um, the cowboy and the panda, each shoots and leaves, you know, that's, uh, that's another example of confusion within linguistics. But anyway, I can't, I'm not going to read this entire article, but anyway, um, Torengen continues. About fetus in cosmetics is quite known here in Norway and has been written in the Dino News for years, but not many do not know that products that contain carbamine, like chewing gum, it's just urine. Ugh, I didn't know that, no. I know there's, well, there is urea in certain creams that I use. I mean, to be honest, urea is a product that comes from urine and it is put into, it can be synthesized, but it's very often simply taken from animal urine and it's put into... Co in, not into cosmetics, but into medical creams for for, for problem skin. I mean, I, I do have like um, bit, I have a bit of a dry skin problem on certain parts of my body, such as my elbows and my feet. And um, I have a cream that I rub in, co which contains urea from urine. Yeah, I'd, but chewing gum—that's different. You put it in your mouth. Ugh. Anyway, thanks for the information there, Tor Engen. Johnny Nigma. Ah, oh, hello. Hey, praise be, praise be the Lord Mayor of Brecon. Yes. Uh, proof from, uh, oh, Johnny says proof from 3747 to 3437 that Ben is an AI robot. Oh, what's this? What's this, Johnny? Let's have a look. Keep an eye on us. Government made disease. Oh, yeah, right, yes. I'm really now. Even Don Jolly believes in that. Mm. Essential oils cure everything. No, Let's just hope it, I hope it doesn't happen with this video. It, I'll re, I'll re-record that bit if it does, but that's annoying when that happened. Yeah, it's it's, it's something wrong either with the microphone or with OBS. I don't know what it was, but um, it, it suddenly reduced in quality for some reason. Maybe it was the maybe it was GCHQ spying on me. I don't know. Dark Corner says uh, on Dom Jolly. I'm a big fan of Dom Jolly. Trigger Happy TV was it was an elite show. Yeah. Dark Corner says the the pig the uh, pig guy on conspiracy came about the around about the same time as the c word I think oh oh pigeons oh right yes pig guy on the theory that pit pigeons are actually government drones watching our every movement when you see them sitting on power lines they're actually recharging <laughs> it's quite a popular meme someone even came up with a diagram of how a pigeon drone would work including charging ports in the feet and cameras in the eyes. <laughs> I didn't know that one. I'd never heard of it. 
uh, Dom Jolly. They, uh, Hugo says, hey, thanks for the mention, Mile High Club. Oh, my good. Listen to me. Did you, uh, did you do it in a plane with your Japanese sweetheart? Oh, blimey. Uh, Diego Rivera, Dom Jolly is not fun funny. Went really downhill after Triggy Happy TV. He's an establishment puppet. Um... Well, I think he is funny, but uh, to be honest, I, I can't I can't argue with the rest of it. He he is an establishment puppet, yeah, and, and Marks is spot on. Tessa says on Dom Jolly, so Greta Thunberg is a stand-up photo, all cardboard, no essence. I think she's a damaged young woman who's been turned into a global mascot for a horrible, uh, world-changing dictatorial agenda and that's very sad and she's she's had her childhood stolen from her she's but she, they, she was taken out of school and fed nightmares um for her whole, her whole life and she's from and they're passing those down onto other people tessa says no need to go to denver airport the murals are all over the net i know tessa i know but i've seen them i've studied them in great detail but i've often thought maybe about going along just, just to see what the, the atmosphere of the place check out the atmosphere of the place you know what i mean um that sort of thing i've been going for 50 minutes right so 10 more minutes and i'll change over Reply to comments 93, it's Neil Peel. It was Scott Henderson, Ben, you were trying to recall specifically. Right, yes, Scott Henderson. Thank you, Neil. Sorry, I was having a bit of a Joe Bl- I was having a Joe Biden moment at that th- right there. Yeah. So who is his name? Oh, come on, help me. I've lost my speech. <laughs> Do something about that nasty Mr. Trump. <coughs> Take a few votes away from him, can you? Um... Neil says Roy Bland didn't want to come on to our Apollo Detectives, even if you were even if, if you were hosting Ben. So <coughs> and said no, either Ben hosting or nothing. <coughs> either Ben hosts or nothing. Thank you, thank you, Neil, for sticking up for me. He plans to debate me over email, although I've not had any from him yet. <coughs> it's up to you if you want to talk to him, Neil. But I don't. I think he's one of the droiks, and um, he wouldn't have come onto the show because then. He would have had to expose himself, and there's one thing the droid trolls guard like the crown jewels, and that is their anonymity. They are terrified of the thought that they might be doxxed, because they're such incredible cowards. I mean, look look at my video confronting droid. They, they they had the opportunity to, 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 to fill me in, as they always say, and they never took it. Gutless little turds, the lot of them. Alan McBride says on Dom Jolly's Conspiracy Show. Nice one, Ben. Thanks. You're welcome, Alan. Uh, Patrick pa- Patrick Patel. Hi, Patrick. Long time no see. Says on Dom Jolly. The intro music always cracks me up. <laughs> dun, 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 bum, ba, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's one of the Chris Zabriskie's. Oops, what's happening here? It's the one I, it's the one I always use for anything with a sceptic theme. It's one of the cylinder. I think it's... What's it called? Because I, I I got all the Chris Zabriskie's. Um, let's have a look. What it's called. Sorry, it's taking a while. But um, I, I always use these. And he's. It's all like. What's the word? It's all like. Um, yeah, it's. I was just. I don't know what it's called. Sorry. I I, I call it Shermer. That's because I first used it. Might used it in a Michael Shermer video, but yeah, I, it's um, it's all he, he allows uh, free use of his music as long as you attribute to him, which I always do. Yeah, and I think they're really they, he's got a song for almost every occasion. That's that that's the tune I use for most of my skeptic videos with a skeptic theme. Mm. Uh, Mark Devlin tour Coda says, "Oh, jubbly joyfuls! Another first trophy. Yes, Coda, gold tin foil hatty load is on its way to you." Deep joy. Hmm. Mark Devlin Oxford Tour says here, great vid, Ben. Mark and fellow travellers, thank you. You're very welcome, Se- Sebastian Moran. Thank you, Sebastian. And same video, Hugo Rune. Hmm. What am I doing for time? 54, right, six minutes to go. Enjoying your vids, Ben. Watching them as you post. I stopped watching other vids. Keep it up. Thank you. Edit. Spliffs in the tin. Canastella in the hand. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, Hugo says here on Mark Devlin tour, um, Ben, I was going to PM you, but sod it. I'll post it here publicly. <coughs> I had the police round today. Nice long chat. They came round to tell me they have no problem with my use of cannabis. 
and they fully accept that it's medical. They are not interested or bothered in who my supplier is. I can continue buying it. I told them I intend to set up and grow again. They told me that's not a problem. I now intend to challenge the government on this, get cannabis law changed. I want to record this. Ben, please visit and help me do it. And Jam Noise says, that's fantastic, Hugo. <coughs> and the Free the Sacred Herb. You know, it's funny. There's these videos here. I, I just saw a video about... Um, where is it? I've just been seeing loads of videos about legalising cannabis. Where is it? There we go. Oh, where was it? Oh, this is literally just a couple of days ago. I think it may be... Here we go. Germany legalised cannabis... Yeah. <coughs> Germany legalises cannabis possession. But I think it might have been on GB News. There was a video about it. Um... And for home cultivation and personal use. That's in Germany. And there was a video that says, <coughs> should Britain do the same? Hmm. There's loads of these, but some of them are quite old. That's Bernie Sanders on Joe Rogan, talking about legalising cannabis. High times for cannabis lovers. Where is it? Um, is it on GB News? Let's have a look. Hang on. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Here we go. Should Britain back cannabis? U.S. cannabis industry projected. Medical cannabis, public possession, a taboo could be shifting. Sad, sad Git Khan sets up London Drugs Commission to consider legalising cannabis. Finally, something good he's going to do. The big question, should we legalise cannabis? Yeah, there's loads on GB News about it. Uh, quite recent in some cases. Uh, oh, and, and of course, oh, JRM's against it. Oh, come on, Jake. You should be in favour of it. Mm. That's disappointing, because the Mog normally is quite wise. Anyway, that's, there's loads of it. There's, that's all come out, you know, I can't help wondering if that's something to do with you, Hugo, doing that. I don't know. Mm. Oh, where are we? Right, okay. Um... Insure Tech says on Mark Dev... Oh, how am I doing for time? I think we're nearly up to the one hour mark. Yeah, a few more minutes to go. Um, Insure Tech says on Mark Devlin's Oxford Tour 1, I want to know more about the generation of architecture sexual energies. Well, yes, and, uh, and um, Dark Corner says, I also find this subject incredibly interesting. Right, well, I can't do more than recommend a video that I made called this... It's got an interesting title. Made it a long time ago. And here we are. It's called uh, The Sexiest Place in Oxford. A, a, a bit of a clue. We were there during the tour with Mark. Check that out. It's only on YouTube for some reason. I never, I've never put it on alt tech. I don't know why. Um, same video, Dark Corners. Very interesting video tour of Oxford. Thanks, Mark and Ben. You're very welcome, Dark Corners. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Ralph Winter says, Nice one, Mark and Ben. Good vid. Good vid, Mark, Mark Winter. Good vid. I think good vid means it means happy Christmas. No, not happy Christmas. It means happy something, happy birthday or something in Swedish or something. But um, you're welcome, Ralph Winter. Glad you like that. Bumbelina says, excellent stuff. Wish I could have been there. Best wishes to you both. Thanks, Bumbelina. Much appreciated. Glad you enjoyed that. Okay, really glad you did. Um, Gary Robinson says, I was, interested in I was interested in attending, as you know, mate, but didn't have time to sort that out. Cheers. Oh, uh, sorry you couldn't get there, Gary, but, you know, hope to see you again there sometime. Um, mm. Gary Robinson says on Mark Devlin tour, um, you mentioned the new Ghostbusters film at 1400 in the video. Yeah, we saw the, <laughs> there was the picture on the side of the bus. I've not seen it, but I listened to Film Threat Review, and apparently one of the lead characters, a teenage girl, has a love affair with a lesbian ghost. WTF? Oh, no. Just when I was, just when I was thinking they'd given up the woke shit. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, Gary Robinson says here on Mark Devlin. Hey, Ben, mate, do you know what's happening in regards to the Oxford being made into a 15-minute city? What's the general reaction of the people? Well, nearly everyone I know is totally against it. I mean, there's some some people are quite like the, the, the LTNs, and there's, there's even local neighbourhood watch groups that guard the LTNs, but most people I know are totally against it. And it hasn't happened. I mean, they've had a lot of opposition. They've had a lot of obstacles. It's all behind schedule, so... 
that's a good sign i think that's a healthy sign anyway guys i think that's the end of hour number one i've because there is actually a timer on my recorder but i will use the actual uh, alarm timer next time um so anyway that's the end of part one back for part two very soon okay i'm back for hour number two and so whoops what's happening now oh, sorry i'm just going to start the timer there um so we've got Blue Wool on the Mark Devlin. Hey, Colin, how you doing? How you doing? So the Moscow Massacre and Kate's big announcement happened on the same day as the Skull and Bones date. Colour me surprised. It's weird, isn't it? Just a coincidence, nothing to worry about. And on the same video, we have Sweeps. Sweeps Foxman. Hey, Sweeps, how you doing? Mysteries galore, Ben. Tunnels, Skull and Bones, alternative dimensions. Conspiracy and now... What's with Oxford been turning into a 50 minute city? Great fellow traveller meeting at this, mate. Wonder, wonder what you've got up your sleeve for part two. Hang ten, see you down the road. Hey, Sweeps, how you doing, mate? He's got a little fox there. <laughs> Sweeps Fox. Yes, uh, that's Oxford for you, mate. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's quite a city. I'd say it's quite a city. Luckily, it hasn't been turned into a 15 minute city yet, but they are trying. I'm sure uh, David's Thunder will be on the first plane over here if they try that. We could do with him over here, I'll tell you, mate. We really could. That guy is an absolute hero. He's your nation's greatest at right now. I'll tell you, he really is. New video, Maria Wheatley at Avebury. And Coda says, On my trophy shelf is all Buckley most and heave it there. Yes, well, you have quite a few of those gold tinfoil hats, mate. They're 24 carats and they sort of look extra thick. They weigh it down a little while, don't they? <laughs> And Hugo Rune says on Maria Wheatley at Avebury, I have daily sex. Sorry, dyslexia. <laughs> a jam noise is laughing. <laughs> yes, that's a difficult... That's, that's, an, that's an example of that thing on that Finnish beer bottle label, isn't it? You know, you can very easily... Just one little mispronunciation and you get a... Comp it's like a pun, isn't it? <laughs> and you end up with a completely different meaning. <laughs> Gary Robinson says, Evening, mate. Pride and dignity. Pride and dignity, Gary. How are you doing? Um, and then Gary says on Maria Wheatley and Avebury, The whole Tartaria thing is really interesting. You should do a video about that, mate. Yes, well, you know, I'm actually going to... You know, I'm actually speaking again at the Maplethorpe group. And the lady who runs it knows a lot about the Tartaria stuff. And she's actually... She wants me to stay a couple of days. And she's going to show me around and show me a few... Oh, guys, and show me a few kind of... Um, and show me a few of the sites, and some of them involve the Tartaria, the Tartarian architecture in Lincolnshire. It's quite something. Well, well we've got a very long comment here by... Oh, it's the return of David Smith, believe it or not. Long time no seeth, seeth old, David. I don't see anyone else replying, so I'll give it a go. Sorry for the long reply. Oh, don't worry about that, David. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll have a lot here for me to, um, to uh, d dissect. Suggesting there are easier ways to make money doesn't mean people will take that route, Ben. People can miscalculate what the rewards will be for certain work or behaviours. We see it all the time with con artists and scammers. We all know that some people can have other reasons for continuing on a slightly harder path financially. They might really believe in what they're doing. Or they may simply find the work easier than what it is they could earn more from. Well, possibly, but I mean, if that would essentially... If that's true, David... Then I think it precludes the idea that they're just scammers because if they believe in what they're doing, they're not con. They're not. They don't believe they're conning people, even if they are factually incorrect. It's not actively conning people. I mean, see, uh, Stephen Cambion actually made a similar point uh, a couple of days ago. He said um, that a lot of the a lot of the people, the the, U the UFO grifters and sure circle jerkers, a lot of them have been. Um, convicted of uh, felony offences and in the United States that very often means you can be blacklisted from quite high paying jobs. I don't know if that's true specifically. I know you can certainly become a you can certainly become a senior politician if you if you are if you're an arch habitual criminal. But um yeah, I mean there what I'm saying is that um there are there are ways and means if you, if if what you if the only thing you want is money and the only thing you're interested in making money uh, I think it does mean you will take a different route. Because you, firstly, you make more money, and secondly, you don't become a social pariah. Um, there may be many reasons why people do certain things. They may, and they, there may be other reasons. I know, and there are many exceptions to every rule, David. But I think you know, if you say you, they really, they may really believe in what they're doing, or find the work easier than what they could earn more from. Well, so firstly, they won't find the work easier because you know, being a 
being a, um, a figure within this field is not easy. It, it inherently makes your life more difficult. But if they believe in what they're doing, then they're not con artists, con artists and scammers. They're earning money from what they believe is honest employment or honest business. They may be mistaken, but they're not deliberately fooling people. Um, see, I know, I know there are exceptions. I know there. Are, I think there are people in this business who are con, who are con artists. Mm. Mm. Time for a bit more dragon juice, I think. Oh. There we go. Oh. <sighs> so yeah, it's a, but I'll, I'll get on with the rest of your comments in a minute, David. I need to refill my dragon juice mug. I've got lemon dragon juice today from the the lemon dragon of of uh, Andalusia. There we are. All right then. Okay, next paragraph. The problem comes from people making money by repeating unsubstantiated claims as fact. Um, well, it depends. If you if you mean people making money from things proven to be false, then yes. But if you mean people making money from things you don't agree with, then no. David continues. That can lead to misinformation spreading. Oh, what about... Yeah, and it can be detrimental to societies. Again, it depends. it depends on the factual nature and whether the person is being honest or not, I think. That is why when people cor correct that in similar ways, they are not the same thing. Um, well, it, I think it is. I think it is, I think. Because when, what you say, when people correct that in similar ways, they are not the same thing. It is not, for example, if the police arrest someone committing fraud, it's not the same thing. You know, but when a backslapper goes on front of a goes in front on front of a webcam and says, "Ha ha ha ha! Everyone's a circle jerker. Everyone's naive. Everyone's a sh right." That is the same thing. It's a person with an opinion and a webcam. So it is the same thing. One is making the claim. One is pointing out to be careful of it or why it is not to be trusted, which can be a valuable lesson for gaining accurate understanding of reality and how better to deal with it or solve problems. Well, I agree with the last bit. <coughs> You know, looking at different opinions is a good way of gaining understanding of reality and how better to deal with things and solving problems. But the first bit, you're wrong. No, both are making claims. So, for example, you could argue that um, you could argue that Stephen Cambion is making a claim. He's making a claim that that UFOs, the the, the whole UFO situation is not real. It's some kind of illusion. And that it's being used by various people for nefarious ends. That's a claim. He's, it's an accusation. He's openly accusing people of being con men. And the only he hasn't called the police, incidentally. He's only just made, he's made videos about them. And at the end, he says, praise the cash, so he wants to be paid. And, um, and then uh, that really, or, then you could equally say that when I criticise Cambion, I, I am pointing out how you should be careful, uh, careful of what he's saying. So, yeah, so I think that cuts both ways. Next paragraph. Using technology to make comments about the moon landing being a hoax is that the same scientific method that went into sending humans to the moon is the same scientific, scientific method used to create technology, such as the internet that you're using to say the moon landings were fake. That's an old argument. Richard Dawkins says that, you know. Science gave these people the internet to make websites about how awful I am. Yes, well... Well, you know, you you put you put out a claim, right? Richard Dawkins puts out claims. He expresses opinions online, right? People like NASA and the and the governments and officials put claims online about humans' achievements in space, space exploration, right? They do that. They claim that the scientific method met, helped them achieve their goals. Dawkins claims that the scientific method helps improve that there is no God. There probably is no God. So get on and enjoy your life, right? We are using the same scientific method to criticise them. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, do you think we're against science? Do you really think that because I think happen to think that, you know, the Apollo missions that are a bit dubious, we should go back to the Stone Age? I mean, this is what an absolute polarisation that is, if that's what you're claiming. <laughs> Even though you could investigate all the methods that we used to create and complete the moon landings, you'd still conclude it as fake. 
Whereas you're quite happy to accept that, a, that the same methods are real in almost all other areas of your life. That is contradictory and irrational. Um, <clears throat> no, I believe things are falsifiable. I, th I, believe, I believe that my, I think my views are falsifiable. If I could investigate all the methods used to complete the moon landings. Well, I think, you know, but people like us, we do that. We do try to do that. I mean, how are we supposed to, how else are we supposed to investigate? We study all the facts of the issues. We looked into the technology. We even tried to find the technology that NASA says they have lost. And things like that. I mean, what's wrong with that? So isn't that, isn't that looking at the methods used to create and complete the moon landings? And then, then we conclude it's fake because... It doesn't add up. And I'm quite happy to accept the same methods are real in almost the other areas of your life. Uh, why is that contradictory and irrational? I mean, I'm quite happy to accept the same methods are real. Yeah. In almost all other areas of your life. I don't see I don't see why that's even um I don't even see how that's a separate point. Why is the analogy of the Bible versus Atlas wrong? One has claims, the other has facts. And things that can be investigated by repeatable, testable methods. Um, well, I don't think I've mentioned the Bible and the Atlas. Did I mention that? Is, is that an analogy of a Bible and an Atlas? Well, the flatheads think that the Atlas is wrong. I mean, anyway, a book about ghosts being real doesn't have any of that. Whether they are be criticized, no, no. Some do, like the Skull Experiment book. It does have that. There's many other there's many other examples like phone calls from the dead. That that's a difficult book to get hold of, by the way, and several others. <clears throat> whether they're criticizing about materialistic mundane okay, whether they are criticizing about materialistic or mundane things. We have evidence of those things and we don't have the same testable, repeatable evidence of ghosts. Well I disagree with you. I disagree with you for the reasons I've explained in some of the videos I've made. I think there is testable, repeatable evidence. <clears throat> um there's a new paragraph now. I know you believe there is good evidence, but that doesn't mean there is good evidence. Well, you knew what I was going to say, didn't you, David? Yeah. I know I know that doesn't mean there is good evidence, but as I explained, I disagree with you, David. And I'm happy to debate it with you. That's how we... we comp I'm, I'm willing to enter into a competition of ideas. Isn't What else am I supposed to do? Hmm. And he repeats here, there's the, your belief in something in no way confirms it as factual, I know. And the same goes for you. You need to show it and demonstrate it, etc. Yes, exactly. And um, that's, that's my challenge to you. Now, that, all right, here we go. Skeptics aren't obligated to give any account for something that's happen, something happening. Yes, you, yes, you are. And, it is, and this, I tackle this. The burden of proof isn't on a sceptic to provide you with another explanation for an experience you had. It is on you to demonstrate your experience event as being good, reliable evidence of something. That, that's not true. That's not true. I cover this in my sceptic talk, this idea of the burden of proof. All right, because if you, if you don't, you, you see, this is, this is why so many sceptics get, get into the clown's day off fallacy. I don't know if you specifically have ended up like this, but I know a lot of sceptics use the clown's day off fallacy. Um, for this reason, and the burden of proof argument kind of, kind it kind of, it kind of it facilitates that. For example, you know the the idea. Well, um, th that th you thought you saw the Loch Ness monster, but it was just a, it was a clown with a day off in the circus, wearing a a wetsuit and holding a papier mâché monster above his head, swimming along. And you say, well, what skeptic? What what model? What wetsuit? What 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 clown? Etc. And he says, I don't have to prove that. I've just thought of something. And because it doesn't involve little monsters in lakes, it wins by default for reasons I will never explain to you. So, I mean, and indeed, even as Michio Kaku says, that you know, the burden of proof is now on those who say, well, everything's a weather balloon and everything's tail is, is like a jet exhaust and everything's seagulls and everything like that. And it's, again, this is the clown. Mick West, is a, there's a lot of clowns day off fallacy in what Mick West says. So it is, actually. I think it is. the burden of proof is on a sceptic in certain situations. A sceptic being the, the correct definition of the sceptic. That is someone who believes that things like this are not real. You are make, sceptics are making a positive claim about the workings of the universe. And yes, you do have to demonstrate it. doesn't mean that the person who sees a ghost is real, is right, but it, it, does, it does mean that the person who says they saw a ghost, and they're not the only one who has to prove what they've said. 
if they provide evidence and the skeptic just says, well, it's, I don't know, it's some swamp gas, or maybe the person, maybe a, 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 a blue bottle dropped a little gram of LSD into your drink, or something like that, you know, clowns day off shit. Anyway, so how can we go now? Okay. The fact some skeptics will offer alternatives just to say that if it's possible invisible dimension shifting beings pushed a book off a shelf then perhaps it might also be possible that some vibration of a passing lorry could have been the cause and that is more likely because we have a lot of solid evidence for passing lorries existing already and there's no need or evidence to jump to a paranormal conclusion as it's unproven well yes it is david this is another good example of what i'm saying if if a if a, if a person lives on a busy road where lorries drive past regularly all the time, and so there's a lot of vibration from the road, and things regularly fall off book, books regularly fall off shelves, you could then that that I think is a very likely explanation for what happened in that case. However, imagine a house which is a long way from any road, and there's no obvious source of vibration, and the book doesn't just fl fall off the shelf; it flies across the room. Right. Now that that you can't say there's you, you, the answer. That's there is no passing lorry. <clears throat> there's no obvious source of vibration. Definitely, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a paranormal conclusion. But it, it, that is a possibility you have to consider. And just imagine, just <clears throat> thinking, just going, oh god, let me think of something. Ah, got it. Right, well, through your imagination and coming up with something in your imagination, which is absolutely absurd and very very unlikely, is is not a good. It's not a good response. All right, here we go. You keep saying there's evidence. Present it. Then present it. Well, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> That's what this channel's all about. When you fail to do this, or what you present isn't good enough evidence, just claims or data that can't be confirmed as something extraordinary, then you claim it's a cover-up. Oh, no, no, I don't always do that. David, I'm not one of these people. I am not one of these people who say, oh, everything, if, you know, if, 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 well, this, it looks like there's an explanation, it's, it was a weather balloon, and not an alien spaceship, but that's a cover-up, all right, now, I'm not one of these people who just answers that way instinctively to every single rebuttal, I don't, you know I'm not like that, I hope you're not going to try and misrepresent me that way, um, I, I think there is sometimes positive evidence of a cover-up. In the case of Roswell, for instance, there is evidence that there was a cover-up and, and a cover story put in. Well, that same irrationality can be used to justify any belief. How can someone tell the difference between something that doesn't exist and something that's been covered up? Well, as I said, David, I don't think that's me. I don't think that's... If someone does do that instinctively, without cause, for every single claim, then yes, that is uh, that is irrationality, but I'm not one of those people. <coughs> hmm. It's like a god who never shows up, never interacts with us. People will claim God made thunder, but they can't actually prove it because it's it's been covered up. You're using the claim as the proof, which is the mistake and irrational. It's the same problem. How would you tell the difference between a thunder god that doesn't exist and the claim that it does exist, but it's been covered up because insert whatever reason you want to push on people for wanting to cover it up here. That is why it's like a religious belief. I know, and as I've explained, I don't think it applies to me. There, how long is this? We're nearly at the end. There are lots of examples of people claiming to have been sceptics before turning to religion or other belief systems who call into the line. And when pressed about their scepticism, it's quickly revealed that they don't understand what scepticism is, and they were never sceptics to begin with. Scepticism and atheism are not the same thing. There are many atheists who were not sceptical. I was brought up I brought up atheism because that's just one type of example where people claim they were sceptics, then found the truth, etc. Alright. Yeah, the um there are people who are former there are many, many people who are former sceptics who changed their mind. Um C. S. Lewis, what he was more sort of he was more sort of atheist, um, rather than a paranormalist, but he was um he, he was in terms of the atheist belief argument. He was an atheist who changed his mind. Um, there's a guy who's written a book saying that he thought he'd converted Christopher Hitchens. Um, things like that. Um, but, I mean, I hear all... I mean, the people who call into the line, the line is that's this thing with Matt Dillahunty. Um, I've watched a couple of episodes of that. I didn't think it was all that good. A couple, I mean, it depends what Matt, mood Matt is in, because sometimes he just gets very belligerent with every, everyone. Other times he's a little bit more polite. But the thing about it is, I mean, it's... 
I sure, I'm sure I could find other examples. I've got a feeling Michael Shermer might become one of these people, and that's going to be very embarrassing for the atheosceptic community. If Shermer crosses the aisle, he, that's a very high-level defection, isn't it? I've done a couple of videos all about that, as you know, if you watch regularly. Um, but, I mean, this idea, there was, it's, I, I think it's a bit dubious when I, I, hear, I hear a lot of sceptic and atheosceptic saying this, that... You know, there, there, there's no such thing as a real, a real atheist and a real skeptic who changed their minds. Any any skeptic who changed their minds, or any atheist who started believing in God, they were never real atheists to begin with. They were never real skeptics to begin with. It's it's very cultic actually. It's this idea that there's ne you know, in cult studies, you know, one one of the conditions of uh, one of the definitions of a cult is that you know, you know people who leave the People who leave the cult are always castigated and demonised by those who remain behind. There's never a legitimate reason to leave. It, there, there's always something wrong with them. They're corrupt or they're traitors or something like that. And, and everyone else in the cult is expected, to break, is expected to break contact with them. Now, of course, that's not what... I know that's not what atheosceptics do. I know there, there are... I mean, I was actually reading a thread... Um, by, I think it might have been on the JREF forum, which, which I, of which I was a member... Um, and um, he was saying, "Look, I'm, I'm beginning to question this whole thing about skepticism. This case has made me change my mind." I, I mean, um, a good example. Sam Harris is a quite a good example, a recent example. I mean, before they sat him down and sort of force-fed him some Mick West Kool-Aid, but before then, you know, he was actually wavering on the whole UFO thing. Um, however, there, there was this interesting thread between uh, someone who used to be a very, who was very active on the JREF forum and he was beginning to question the, the sceptic worldview and, and he was in a conversation with other people and it was quite a good natured discussion it was a good I, I don't know what ended what that person ended up experiencing I don't know what happened to them whether they continued down the road or whether they went back I don't know um, but the, you know the idea that there's, there, there is no real apostate to my cause is, is a is a I think is a quite pathological position. I'd, anyway, um, here we go. People claiming to go from scepticism to, to believers is meaningless because that doesn't give us good evidence. It's evidence that people are being duped, tricked, fooled, believing in things for bad reasons. We have lots of evidence for that, but it does, n it does nothing to back up the claims they believe in. If you believe something because of good evidence, then that evidence should be what is presented, not case examples of people coming to that belief. I know, and, and the thing about it is... You see, it's not meaningless that people go from scepticism to belief, because it's and it's not it, and that is not evidence that people have just been duped or tricked or fooled. Because sometimes they do have evidence. Sometimes it is actually the evidence of something that makes them change their minds. I saw I saw a very interesting lecture by a young woman. It was actually at one of the atheosceptic conferences, and she just said, "You know, I had, I, I I I was I'm an atheist." She says, "I've always been an atheist," and um, well. What inspired me most was Richard Dawkins. I read The God Delusion. And then I read C.S. Lewis. And when I read C.S. Lewis, I couldn't believe... I couldn't believe how deep and intelligent the actual anti-atheist, the, the actual theist and belief argument was. I had no idea it was so sophisticated. Now, she has not... I should point out this woman has not changed her mind. She's still an atheist. But she has had a new insight into the, into the other side of the argument. Because, and this is a good point, because I mean, if people are becoming atheists because they read Richard Dawkins, they they are they are they are being fed a a, a caricature, and of the the other side of the argument, they're being fed a deluge a, a, a straw man delusion of the other side of the argument, and this person is is kind of like a, a good a good idea of that. Many people like uh, Alistair McGrath say that, you know, they really say that. Hmm. Um. Saying you're being irrational is not rhetoric when it's backed up by examples of what you said and claimed, yet fail to show it's true. Yes, it is, it is irrational, David, when you just say, you're irrational, you're irrational, you're irrational. I says, well, look at this evidence. But that's irrational, that's irrational, that's irrational. Just repeating that is rhetoric. If you say, that's irrational, and you're being irrational, and this is why, that's not rhetoric. Do you see the difference? I've watched your sceptic talk, and you get it wrong there. You don't want to call into the line because the host will be firm but fair. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, that's right. David, I hate debating with people who disagree with me. That's why I'm banning you now and I'm deleting your comments and I've not and I have not just spent 20 minutes talking to you. <laughs> you see, I could never talk to Matt Dillon Hunting, could I? I couldn't because, you know, I've just spent a lot of time on this video dedicated to one comment you've made. Yes, that's that is really shying away from con from from confrontation, Ben. It's really rejecting any dissent. You're really not interested in discussing anything except people people you you agree with. You have a you have a little echo chamber here on your videos, Ben, don't you? Yeah, I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Okay, um, I could only find one recording of you with a skeptic, and the pushback you got wasn't great. It also didn't deal with your overall beliefs in these topics, just some minor details about claims which don't get to the foundations of what you believe and why. All right, that's, um, was that, um, was that when I was on with Marsh? Can you link your skeptic talk debate so I can listen to them? For example, the Bowler Hatman video is about Ukraine, not paranormal, etc. Yes, certainly. Yes, as I certainly will. Let me just have a look. I'll just post you some links here, um, David, just a sec. I just want to make sure that I have, um, I've, I've, I've put that in there, okay. Um, where's Bowler Hat Man? Okay, hang on. Because I've got two Bowler, hang on. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Where's, where is it? Hang on. Here we go, here's one of them. Alright, this is one of them. I know it says podcast removed there, but ignore that, because just go to the... Uh, you need to go to the... Uh, David, you need to go to the... to the archive.org page. Alright, mate, go to the archive.org page. Right, and the other one is... What's the other one? Here we go. Um, my so Marsh, I want Marsh. Here we are, Ben and Lynn Jones on Be Reasonable. This is another one. All right. And then there was me, and there's one I did with Tristan Swale, who I've recently fallen out with. Um, I did two with Swale, actually. Where is it? Oh, fuck's sake. All right, here we go. I'll just, I'm just trying to find these things for you. Mm. Mm. Here we go. It's me on Fortean Radio. It was not called Righteous Indignation. It's changed its name to Fortean Radio. There's another example there. Oh, there's, there's quite a few of these. Um, I'll, I'll, there's some more I could send you, but I don't have time right now, David. Sorry. Okay, so I'll get back the thing on my clipboard. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um, you are using an alien of the gaps argument. You believe it's aliens when it can't be explained. Look how it's moving. We don't, quote, we don't have anything that can move like that. It's a cover-up. The children say they saw it. Wouldn't use much military equipment. Would They wouldn't use so much military equipment for a balloon. Um, that's not an alien of the gaps argument. Alien of the gaps meaning because there's no other explanation, you just put aliens in there as a, from your imagination. I don't think that's fair. I think I, I, I in, the, in my videos and my other publications, I put positive evidence in for these things. There is no good testable evidence for these things to be considered as anything other than unknowns. Yet you want to mark such events as evidence of aliens. Um, not, no, I... Well, for example, I, I, I'm not saying that things like the Tic Tac are definitely alien. I say that it, it's, it, it contains the five observables, which indicates it's not made by human hands. What does that leave? If it's not humans who made it, who made it? Now, in some cases, there is a positive reason to state that you believe it's aliens. For example, the testimony of Walter Hout with the Roswell incident. That's not an alien of the gaps fallacy, you say here. Uh, that's an alien of the gaps fallacy. Um, it's, it's not, you see. And you say here, you haven't eliminated hoaxers, scammers, advanced human tech. You just really, but really believe that, it, that, and that is irrational. No, no. I have, in, in many cases, I have eliminated hoaxes, scammers, and advanced human tech. I've explained 
For example, um, in for example, um, in the case of uh, the Tic Tacs, you, you can eliminate hoaxers and scammers, and advanced. I believe you can also eliminate advanced human technology. Um, uh, technically, theoretically, not, but in practice, yes, it, it is. Because if it can't, if it's human technology, it doesn't explain its behaviour and it doesn't explain its antiquity. That is not irrational. That's a perfectly rational position. Hmm. David continues. Nobody has ever proven to be abducted by aliens. People have had experiences, and indeed there, there's, there's all kinds of evidence supporting it, where they have interactions with non-human beings. Now, if those non-human beings are, are not human, then what are they? What do you call them? Call, give them another name, if you like. You don't have to say aliens. But there is evidence that this is going on. That's not to say they didn't experience something, but there is no proof of evidence. There's no good evidence to say it's aliens. Yes, there is. It's another example of the alien alien of the gaps argument you use. No, it's not. No, 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 no. I've just explained. No. There's positive reasons for this. The wow signal isn't dismissed. So where's the cover-up for that? Look, if you if you if you watched my SETI talks, my, I've done, one of them's on Sarah Rachel Adams's channel, right? But the wow the, the wow signal is different. The wow signal is something picked up by astronomers. As I've explained before, the uh, the idea you know detecting aliens up in space beaming signals to Earth, and a flying saucer crashing in some rural part of New Mexico, is is very very different in terms of the flows of information, and indeed the implications. I mean, I've said many times I believe there cannot be a cover-up in astronomy. astronomy. If aliens were beaming signals to us, they couldn't cover that up. There's just too many telescopes, too many astronomers. Astronomy is a truly democratic science. Um, I'll explain more in my SETI talk. There are many possibilities to put forward what may have caused it. But there are no scientists any suggesting it's impossible for it to be aliens. So the narrative you have about cover-ups and any information about aliens being closely guarded secrets seems... It's far-fetched to me. Right, um... So I should have read a bit more of that before I said what I did in my reply. I've never suggested there was a cover-up of the wow signal. And I know that uh, some some astronomers are saying it possibly is an extraterrestrial um, intelligence creating it. There could be other explanations for it. No one knows. Hmm. As a sceptic, I fully admit the wow signal could be alien in origin. But it's correctly labelled as unknown. Yeah, I agree. I agree, David. If the scientific community is so against the possibility of such events happening, why are they still not concretely stating it was simply a natural phenomenon? Because they can't state that. Because the reason they can't state that because it was so it was picked up um, by a telescope pointing at the sky. That's why. But because you see, if they if they can't really they can't really dismiss that as a natural phenomenon. And if they and if they did, supposing also the implications of it being see again, it's the implications. The, the implication, the social and political in, in, implications of saying there's aliens millions of light years away beaming signals to us. Right? That's, saying, that's, that's saying one thing. Saying there are aliens right here on Earth. They have a presence on our planet. They're flying around in craft and they're crashing. Th those two things are very, very different in terms of the impact, the social and, Im and political and economic impact. That's why they're quite happy to say it's possible that that's the, the wow signal was aliens. It's a clear example of how scepticism requires an open mind rather than your ill-defined version of scepticism. Yes, David, it's good to have an open mind, but not so open-minded that your brain falls out. <laughs> Brian Dunning is a pretty good sceptic. His highlighting of the lighthouse being a possible explanation seems credible and has evidence to back it up, whereas the claims of an alien craft is pretty poor. Um... No. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know about... I'm, I'm Brian Dunning being a good sceptic. I don't know if he's a good sceptic or a bad sceptic. Maybe he deserves a, an award. If he gets an award, I hope he doesn't... He better not drop it in the shower. But the thing about it is, David, you've got to realise that the, that the lighthouse being a possible explanation has been debunked. It has been comprehensively discredited. And it was comprehensively discredited soon after it was suggested. And it was suggested not long after the event happened. This is the most passe thing imaginable that he's presented in his documentary as breaking new evidence. Hmm. There are the, the, the evidence, the claims of an extraterrestrial craft or an, a craft of unknown origins are very, very strong. 
it's I think there's very good reason to think that some an object of un, an un, a product of an unknown non-human intelligence was present at, in the forest that day. Mm. There is no desperation as skeptics are not obliged to present alternatives for claimed paranormal events. Ah, uh, well, you see, I disagree with that, David, and I think there is, and I think deep down they understand it, which is why the desperation. The burden is squarely on the shoulders of those who believe in the paranormal, yet constantly fail to present good evidence. And I disagree completely, David. But, David, that's, that was a very long, detailed, but I must say a very interesting comment. And um, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I devoted time to answering you. Thank you very much. Right, now we move on to Grey Owl and Maria Wheatley at Avebury. Um, who says, rock on, Benno. <laughs> I do thoroughly enjoy when you take us out in the field, as it were, on board perimeter detail sweeps with your ops quadrant. <laughs> on board perimeter detail with your ops quadrant. I should have brought my dowsing rods, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Grey Owl. And Dark Corner says, me too, love a good reportage video. You're very welcome, I'm hoping to make some more soon. Hmm. TKUK says and Maria Wheatley. Brian Forrester miss equals misses out academic latest research on purpose, does he? Uh, can you give me an example, TK? And Gary Robinson says, is that in regards to his research in Peru? Question mark. Um, we are Marie Wheatley Avebury. Anna Racker. So, ah, I know who this is. Ah, so lovely to meet you again, Ben. Always a pleasure to catch up with you. Ah, this was the this was the lady I was telling you about. And that the lady in the van, yeah, it was amazing. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't that amazing. Like I said, it was. It, she's the kind of person I I, I would bump into in a place like that because it's like it. It's like a. It's like a, a mecca for people like us. And I knew I would see somebody her or somebody like her there. But it's great to see you there. And, and popcorn says, "Were you? Were you Jojo? All right. And well, Anna can mention. Anna can answer that question." Maria Wheatley, Ralph Winter. Nice one, Ben. Good vid. Thank you very much, Ralph. Thanks, much appreciated. Gary Robinson says on Maria Wheatley, I'm enjoying this video, Ben, but if there is such a thing as a wind filter, is there such a thing as a wind filter for video cameras? I think we should do a Hapanwa whip round and get you one. It's crazy just how windy the UK tends to be all year round. Uh, Gary, I know. I'm sorry about that. And what I'll do is um, there, yeah, I can get a wind filter. I had a wind filter, actually. I had a little fur little fur ball on, fur ball on the mic of my old camera. And um, I'll get one for this one. I will. Um, but I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. I actually tried to, to minimise the wind. I, I kept turning the camera to, towards me so that it was more, um, it was more easier to see. Gary says apparently there's a new VST plugin which uses AI to remove wind from audio recordings. It's called Wind Remover. That's an original name by Crumple Pop. <laughs> Thank you. I'll I'll download that one. And Dark Corner says I believe in the business they are known as Muff. No, Dark Corner. That's a different business, and it refers to something different. Okay, uh, Glowtone Channel. Hello, Glowtone. How are you? I'm Maria Wheatley. Mm. The round building in the churchyard at 4300 intrigued me, so I did a bit of detective work and found this. Right, that's ref uh, what Glowtone is referring to is the rotunda with the little pigeonhole things in it. Yeah. The round building in the churchyard of St. James's Church in Avebury holds a significant historical importance as it is a rare remaining example of a 15th century roof loft. Rude screens, that's R-O-O-D, and lofts were essential features of British churches from the 14th to mid-16th century. Only 24 roof lofts are left in existence throughout Britain, with one at Avebury Church being one of them. This particular roof rude loft survived because parishioners dismantled it and hid it behind a wall, where it remained buried until its discovery during renovation work in 1879. All right, well, that's interesting, thank you. <coughs> I mean, a lot of people say there's something unique about St. James's Church. Uh, rude screens. I mean, uh, rude screens. Actually, there are churches which still have rude screens. They've been left there. Um, the one there was one I went to when I went to. Oh, what, I can't remember the video, but I went to this church. It was one. It was a really old church because it had the it had the altar pressed right against the wall, rather than in a space where the priest stands behind it. Um, and um, I remember. I remember the video. I, just, I think it might have been the it might have been the first Glastonbury video. I can't remember. But um, there was a rude screen in that church, yeah. Tessa111 says on Maria, Sorry, but the windy mic is so distracting. I'm sorry, Tessa, I really am. Um, I'll try and see if I can do something about that. Popcorn Boxing. Do you consider yourself a recalcitrant, Ben? 
Yes. Now, I mean, maybe not. I'm not a, that much of a, recal a recalcitrant, by the way. Somebody who has to be obstinate for the sake of it. I think I'm, you know, someone who just likes to be contra contradictory and contrarian. I'm actually, I think I'm more like I am someone who is obstinate and contra contrarian, but only, only when I think there's a good reason. I don't do it for the sake of it. I just I don't do it for the sake of it. Popcorn boxing. I'm surprised you did not record Maria's speech. Right. Well, you know, I never actually asked her if I could. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I had the battery power left in the camera. Um, I didn't bring my charger with me, which is silly. I, was, I thought I might be going home that evening. You see. Mm. But um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, maybe Maria's made her own recording, in which case it'll probably end up on YouTube. Oh, there are other examples of Maria doing that speech, actually, in other places. Popcorn boxing. Um, oh, I, I, mean, I did record part of her speech. I recorded her when she went outside. I mean, technically, I could have, if you know, if she wasn't making her own recording, I could have recorded her in there. I mean, I, maybe I should have asked. Sorry about that, popcorn. Maybe yeah, I should have asked. Same video, popcorn boxing. Looks like a hidden weed farm. What's this? This is another video here. Yeah. <laughs> 86 feet deep and believed to be at the last oh, right. place. <laughs> yeah. One unfortunate village. Oh my god. <laughs> Hugo. It's Hugo's. <laughs> Look, there's Hugo's stash. <laughs> yes. Hugo, you've been caught out, mate. Do you really think the police. Are, you think you can get away with it? The police won't find it down there. <laughs> uh. mm, there we go. Um. Uh, Maria Wheatley. Um, Snarnock. Hello, Snarnock. Enjoyed the video, Ben. The round building looks like a dovecot. Right. Dovecot meaning my... I suppose that means something to do with uh, doves and pigeons and things, doesn't it? In that case, that what I thought that was what it was. I thought that might be... I thought that might be something to do with... Um, I thought that might be something to do with... Um, with pigeons, you know, and I said that at the time. Snarlock says, Mark Devlin, Oxford Tour 1. Have you ever been to Cambridge? Yes, Snarlock. In fact, I went a couple of months ago, a few months ago. I went to Cambridge, um, and I made a video about it. Where was it? Just a few months ago. Where was Where was it? Um, yes, it was October. Just, just a few months ago. The Theory of Permanent Disclosure. It was this video. Theory of Permanent Disclosure, where I was in Cambridge. Now, when I say I was in Cambridge, I did another one as well called... Um, this one, Guided Buses. I did that back in 2014. That was in Cambridge as well. But when you say, did I go to Cambridge, I didn't sort of do a tour of it the way... So, for example, I didn't do a tour the way Mark did a tour of Oxford. So I've never been to Cambridge in that sense. Maybe I should. Maybe I should go and check out the colleges and things like that in Cambridge. So that, that would be properly going to Cambridge things, you know. I mean, yeah. Popcorn boxing says on Maria. Big society. I remember that Tory slogan in 2010. Yes. Big, I got it. It's, it's new society, not big society. I, get, I keep getting that wrong. Hmm. All right. And we have here Mark Rogalski on Maria. Thank you, Maria, for, vi for the visit to the healing centre. All right. So you were, you were there. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the video, Mark, because um, it's a nice little reportage there. Dom Jolly's Conspiracy Show, Contact Times. I think that's David, uh, David Griffin, I'm not sure. I wish you'd been brave, Ben, and video bootlegged it for us. <laughs> uh, David, I know, I mean, it's not. I don't think bravery comes into it. I think it's simply respect. I, I wouldn't disrespect the guy by, you know, recording when, they, when he specifically tells us not to. So, no, I mean, there, there will a video of this will emerge at some point, don't worry. There will be a video recording available at some point. So you will see it then. Uh, Maria says, um, another cracking video, Ben. Sorry, no, this is Maria didn't say this. This is Maria Weekly at Avebury, the video. And Dark Corners UK says, another cracking video, Ben. Thanks for taking us on along with you on your adventure. You're very welcome, Dark Corners. <coughs> uh, Maria, again, Dark Corners. Anyone else watch Children of the Stones on the BBC as a child? Standing Stones have always left me with an unsettling feeling since that show. Yeah, and Dark Corner says, I just Googled it. I never realised that the show itself was actually filmed in Avebury. I did see that. Yeah, I don't remember it very well, but it was like a children's spooky drama, I remember. Um, that, that was actually it was a bit... Uh, yeah, I remember it being sort of, not horror, kind of supernatural thing, yeah. Mm. But it was filmed there, yeah. Um, 
Dark Corners, the round building next to the museum is very reminiscent of some old ice houses you find in many historic locations. Yeah, that, was it? Could it be an ice house? Because there's an ice house at Blenheim Palace, which I've seen. <coughs> the ice house. It's also the name of an Australian sort of rock and roll, rock and roll kind of band. Um, you gotta be crazy to want a guy like me. You gotta be out of your mind. Good band they were. Yeah. Um, Snarnock says on Dom Jolly. I used to enjoy Trigger Happy TV along with the other comedy series from that era. I know that Dom Jolly is, the, is a Tintin fan and he presented a documentary on Hergé Tintin. Well, he's good, good. He's got good taste. And he, he can't be that much of a bloody wokey if he likes Tintin because Tintin is very politically incorrect. <laughs> I used to read... I loved the Tintin books when I was a kid. Yeah, I used to love them. I used to read them over and over and over again. Good for him, yeah. Trigger... Yeah... I bet he'll, he'll be cancelled for that, you know. Mm. Snarnock says on Mark Devlin, I remember you mentioned that Mark has a contact who managed to get his books sold in Waterstones. Would you be able to ask Mark's contact if you could do the same with Roswell Rising? Then you could do a book signing event at your local Waterstones branch. That's a great idea, Snarnock. And you know, well, the book is available at Waterstones. <coughs> you can order it. I mean, if you go to their website and look, search for it, you'll find it. You can order it at any branch of Waterstones if you want. But so whether it's actually on the shelf... I've not actually seen it stocked at any branch, but I've only been in two of them. I went in one in Swansea, and I went in one in Oxford, and they don't have it on the shelf. But um, whether I could do like a, I mean, have like a book signing event at the branch, I could try. I mean, it would probably cost me some money, but it might be worth it for the publicity. Uh, right, Dr. Keith says on Maria Weekly, Great you're out about getting some much-needed exercise. <sighs> Am I paranoid in thinking you're saying that I'm a fat bastard? Because I'm not. I'm actually pretty fit, and I do get lots of it. I actually have a job which gives me plenty of exercise, so this is good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nice. To, it is actually, to be honest, I did need to get out and about. Not not for health reasons, but well, for mental health reasons more than physical. Yeah. Right. Video band eight. New video here. Um, Popcorn boxing says, um, "Oh no, is this a forerunner to, to, for your entire channel ban?" Oh, I hope not boxing cop popcorn. I've got one red strike already, though, for something I didn't do on, on a video that was banned, uh, saying it was threatening behaviour, and I don't see any threatening behaviour in it. Um, but I've had a couple of yellow strikes, and some I've had some I've had some week long. I've been sort of like prevented uploading a week and things like that. But yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I hope not, but it's it's possible. These days, anyone can get banned from anything. Dr. Keith says in reply, never. Ben's channel is paid opposition. Two mince pies and a pint of cheap lager per show. Mm. Only at Christmas time. It's pork pies at all other times of the year, Dr. Keith. Yes. I'm a very cheap shell. I sold out quickly. And the back slappers, are, some of the back, some, even some of the back slappers can't believe it, you know. Popcorn Boxing says on Video Band 8, you feel like Goldstein, wasn't he the controlled opposition in 1984? Well, it's hinted, you see, um... It, it is hinted at the... And in fact, David Yorkshire says he was basically the Trotsky figure, the one who'd been instrumental in creating the totalitarian, the totalitarian state before falling out of its own purges, yes. Um, similar to Snowball in, in... Snowball was the Trotsky figure in in Animal Farm. Basically, both these both these people represent Leon Trotsky. In fact, Goldstein is, describing as, is described very much as looking like Leon Trotsky... And um, George Orwell would be familiar with this because he was part of the POOM in the Spanish Civil War, which was a Trotskyite a militia, sort of part of the left opposition. Um, and um, there, it is hinted, in fact, you know, once when, when during the, after, after Winston's arrest and he's tortured and O'Brien is revealed as a, as a fake rebel, you know, as a, just part of a controlled opposition, and it's just, it's just a confidence trick. It's like a deeper part of them of the, the mental prison they're in, that even when you think you've broken out of it, and, and O'Brien is one of these people who makes people think they've broken out of it, and he just says, no, no, even here, there's no way, it's just another part of the worship of Big Brother. You see what I mean? And and then you think, well, no, and then he says, you know, you get the, it's sort of hinted that he wrote the book and Goldstein is just made up, you know. Goldstein is just like a kind of imaginary figure, it's like that, you know. Um it's it's but you don't really know. See the the, the last part of nineteen eighty four. You don't really know what's happening. Indeed, that's that's what it's like for Winston. Winston doesn't know in the end. What, he's so confused. He doesn't know anything about what's going on. 
all he, he he's hit with confusion along with his pain and suffering and the outright terror of being eaten alive by rats in this most it's the most terrifying thing, way of dying that he can imagine and then they say well what, what do you want us to do it to someone else she says do it to julia do it to julia um and and all well witness torture in the spanish civil war he knew that it could break it could break a man down so much that he would just he'd however much winston loved julia he would say i don't care just do it to julia and that was another way of destroying his self-esteem because that portrayal that 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 betrayal was was a way of if it caused him to hate himself you see what i mean um anyway that's interesting thanks for, that's a good good questions pop and boxing and dave yorkshire thank you very much for that explanation yes definitely a crafty nihilist says tune uh, yeah that's uh, the music that i provided for this particular video because i can't they can't copyright strike me on my own music surely <laughs> tessa 111 makes the peace sign thank you very much tessa on videos band eight video band eight dave yorkshire says here um on video band eight you're not even in my league even my bit shoot channel is banned in most countries I've had a dozen I've banned off YouTube, and I only put the milder ones up. I only put up milder ones on here, and I think that's all right. <laughs> really, David, are you banned? Let's have a look. Let's, let's try and find you on YouTube on BitChute. Don't worry about being. Don't be. Don't worry about being like an alt tech exclusive. Because all the best people are these days. If they ban me from YouTube, I'll see it as a compliment. Are you here? Um. I can't see you on here. Maybe you, are you banned on UK? So I'll have to look at you through. I'll, I won't be able to sub to you then. I'll have to look at you through. Through. Um, I'll have to watch you through like Tor or another VPN. But yeah. Anyway, David, you must be doing something right, David. If you're banned in all those places. Yeah, you're, you're obviously the, the flax heavy. You must be over the target, mate. Yeah. Video banned eight. Keith, Doctor Keith. Obviously, the lizard overlords weren't happy. Keep exposing the truth, one video at a time. I will, Doctor Keith. Those liver, those lizard overlords won't get me. Never get me. I, I mean, it's possible you're being sarcastic here, but the fact of the matter is, what you just said is is what is true. And so, yeah, I'm not. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, but yeah, there we go. Video band eight. Andrew Johnson seems a pleasant, well-meaning chap. Perhaps it's time to forgive him. You seem to get very upset when you mention his name. What does RDH think about your feud with Andrew? All right, this is the Manchester Dogman. That's a good. Are you are you that Manchester Dogman? I think I know you. You go to you go to the. I saw you last year, didn't I? If you, are you who I think you are? Stay on the road. Keep clear of the moors. Oh yeah, wicked. Let's have a look. Stay on the road. Keep clear of the moors. Yes. And what? And let's get out of the slaughter of the lamb. All right. Well, I'll have a look at your channel later. All right. Look, all right. Well, my feud with Andrew Johnson. Um, I've ex I have explained this. In fact, I've got a vi I've got a video called Barry Dies, which explains everything. Um, he seems a pleasant, well-meaning chap. He he is uh, interesting. He's not pleasant. He's the opposite. And you know, he. Um, I I tell the full story there. But basically, when when Ian R. Crane died. Andrew, well, it was before he died. And Ian actually put up a, it was one of his last ever Facebook posts saying he was going to have another operation. It was, he was probably going to die, and everyone was just posting underneath, really sorry. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm really, really, and we were devastated. I mean, we we loved Ian. I mean, Ian was a great man, and Andrew, and that was a time when really, if you can't say something nice, just say nothing at all. And Andrew immediately launches into he he wades in with his size twelves and he says. And Ian R. Crane lied about 9-11 and lied about Dr. Judy Wood and lied about... And I, I mean, I just... Said, oh. And I posted an extremely rude comment onto that and I blocked him because how dare he? I mean, who the hell's... How dare he? Um, it's what's ironic is I actually agree with some of Andrew's criticism of Ian, but if that's n not the time and place to say it. And, you know, his... his, his, his his partner was watch was would have read that. His children would have read that. And um, he he did other things as well. He made a video after I made a video called Barry Dies, where I bring up this subject. It was about another man dying, but it was I bring up this subject with Andrew. Andrew made a video called A Critical Look at Ben Emlyn Jones, which is full of fact. I didn't bother replying, but he's loaded with factual errors about me. 
And um, it, what, but what he made it very clear was, and he even had like a, he had a little hint, he had this little tab open saying, it, it was called Ian R. Crane, Ian R. Crane dies as my video, and there's another tab open that says, and this is a blessing. And this is a blessing. This is why I said, I'll show him what a bloody blessing is if he comes near me. So you say, perhaps it's time to forgive him. No, he's not sorry. He's completely unrepentant. I do get upset when I mention his name because cause he, cause he's such a fucking piece of shit for doing that. And he should be ashamed of himself. And he's not sorry. And he's complete, He's unrepentant. He's not backtracking. He's doubling down. So therefore, he, he's, he's off my Christmas card list, mate, long term. Uh, what does RDH think about your feud with Andrew? I don't know and I, couldn't, I don't care. I don't give a shit. So that, the answer to your question is no. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to make up with Andrew. I don't want to. He wouldn't. He probably wouldn't want to with me. I don't want people like that in my life. Despite the fact that I think he's right about a lot of things, I still watch his channel. <sighs> yeah. And Coda says underneath, "Oh no, pleasanty most. He was certainly knockers." <laughs> yeah. Jonesy Androl, John C. Androl, was the first most U.S. president to be in Peachy. All crossy fingers and nose grow it. When he took the oathly office, there deep folly. That's true. Yes. Um. Before uh, before Clinton in 1990s and before Trump in the 2020s, um, there was a president that was actually impeached before. It was in it was in in around about 1860, and it was and it was a U.S. president called Andrew Johnson. Yeah, and he was um, no no. Uh, it's a very common name. <laughs> no. Uh, no relation, I'm I'm sure, but um, yeah, he was impeached too. No, no president has ever. He was not actually removed. Um, no, so far, um, no president has been removed from office. I mean, there was um, the Congress does have the power to dismiss a president, and under certain circumstances, they would. And of course, the left, were, the lefties were all screaming for them to dismiss Trump. Um, even after, even after Biden's inauguration, and he was no longer technically president. So at least, well, you can't talk about that on YouTube. They were, they were yelling at them to be re for removal, you know, even a, s a symbolic removal, but they never did it. Uh, right, video bands eight. Taff Derek Baker. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> Go away. And Dark Corner said he's not the Messiah. Who are you talking about? <laughs> video band eight. Dark Corners. Not again. I know Dark Corners. It's a pain in the pain in the ass, isn't it? How dare they? Uh, right, Mark Devlin Tour 1, Popcorn Boxing, 5530. Right, I know what this refers to. Actually, it was just one painting that was stolen, the Cezanne, still unsolved. Yes, I actually looked it up myself afterwards, Popcorn Boxing. I, I remembered it slightly wrong. I was referring in, in, the, in Mark Devlin's tour that on, in the Ashmolean Museum, uh, there, was an, there was a break-in. On the in the early hours of the first of January two thousand, so everyone was dr everyone was had was drunk and partying because it was the millennium, and so these thieves decided it would be a good time to to break in and steal a painting. It was a professional job. I mean, they used special gas to neutralise the security system. These were these were these were professional art thieves who knew what they were doing, and they stole a, a Cezanne painting, a French impressionist, very valuable, worth millions. And it's still yeah, it's, it was obviously sold on the black market. It was ordered by somebody. And they probably they're probably trading on the black market for enormous 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 amount of money. Mm. And popcorn boxing ads here on Mark Devlin. I really enjoyed this video. Thanks, popcorn boxing. Much appreciated. A video band eight. Coda says, "Well, YouTube all sendy. This Morsley codloader communicale telling right all sending this Morsley codloader communicale telling Ben Loader." Now you shop your cakey, or will abracadabra your video bloggage all puff and smoke it there? <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> now all considering you are from the tribe of the sheep loved people, <coughs> <coughs> Welsh people in other words, <laughs> why not page turny leaf it? Turn over a new leaf, yeah. Walk a whale and all napply sack and whistle there, with a nap sack and whistling, yeah. Start singly oprail, all chest puffage and wine glass shattery, with a big divage, all bosom heave it at the Carnegie Hall. Oh yes, uh, that refers to oh, an opera singer, or oh, with a puffy chest, puffy chest, wine and shattering a wine glass, with a big diva, all bos bosom heaving at Carnegie Hall. Yes, I do. Yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe that's what I should do. Go and look at one of them, yes. <laughs> RDH Panorama. Coda says here. This is, this is an old live stream I did a, about a year ago. Punch hit the sky, punch hit the sky bowl for D. Hawley Richloader. Yes. It will warm his heart's trails and put smiley most across his fizzgog. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not a lot put smileys on his fizzgog these days, unfortunately, Coda. Um, yeah, he, he used to be he used to be a much more cheerful person when I first met him, actually. Um, then, just for fun standing all at Erica's and pridely dignifol in the Parkley car load. Oh, in the car park, yeah, and pretend he to speak it into the lapelage of your trenchy coat load, speaking into my trench coat. For when he's looking, then just walk away. <laughs> I could take the mickey out of him saying, he's just leaving now. Yes, he's heading for his van. Yeah. He probably thinks I'm a shill anyway, Coda, so yeah. <laughs> Ghost in the park, Coda says. Oh, yes. Speak it uttery, uttery wordage to peep loads from beyond the grail. And they have give me, given me an importy most communicable for human species. All right, you speak to peoples from beyond the grave. Oops, that's the end of an hour. Okay, so, uh, right, they've given me a message for, for the human species. Message reads, Mary loves dich. Now, trickly, trickly, how to your representee statage and do likewise. Mary loves dich. Oh, that was, that was Derek Acora, yes. <laughs> Derek Akora, yeah, he was, uh, Derek Akora was, um, he said, Mary loves dick, Mary loves dick, yes. Yeah, that's the end of an hour anyway, so, uh, thanks very much. Okay, we're here, we're off an hour number three. <coughs> I should point out that, um, who was it, um, Dakota says something else. Now, trickly, trickly how to your representative state agent, I, and do likewise, your state representative, and do likewise, to what the peep loaders beyond the grail did? About, should, should I write to my M <coughs> should I write to my MP Coda and say Mary loves dick if I did that to Annalisa Dodds who's my MP I'd end up in jail Annalisa Dodds who's my MP and probably will be just even though I, I'll vote I'll no way I'll vote against her um, she is uh, she is Kastama's what's the word women's and equality shadow she's the shadow camp, shadow sec, shadow ministers and equality secretary or something like that Oh dear, yeah. Anyway, John Nolan, video bans eight. Video banned eight, John Nolan. It was the Germans, Ben, of course. No, John, uh, John. John is channeling his inner Shrimpton there, definitely. Um, I should I should actually point out, now somebody did put a comment on here. Uh, talking, going back to Coda, someone put a comment on the video. They later deleted it. But it basically says, oh, please, said, oh, don't stop allowing this person to speak all this nonsense on there because it's ruining your videos or something like that. I can't remember the exact words. But they, they were very critical of Coda and the way he talks. I think it's a he, yeah. In fact, I know it's a he. Um, and, um, you know, they sh I shouldn't tolerate that. And I should just tell him to shut up and speak normally. And they find it irritating. Um, they, 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 to be fair, I won't say who posted this comment. And they later deleted it. But, I mean, I don't agree personally. I don't. I think it's quite amusing. I, I think Coda... I like... I quite like Coda. I like what he... I like what he does. I think he, he brightens up... He brightens things up. I think he makes it... He makes the video more fun and more interesting. And I can always translate for you. I'm learning this Unwinnie's thing, and I can translate for you. So, no, I'm not going to tell Coda to, to, to talk normally. I'm going to... I hope he continues to do what he does, because I, I like what he does. So that's an answer to that comment that was deleted. Do bear in mind, actually, if you if you send me a comment and you then later delete it, I can still see it because I get like an email notification. A video band eight Ravenhill said, um, <coughs> "Ben, I'm not a fan of all this censorship. YouTube feels dictatorial and communist now. I remember when YouTube first launched in 2005, and the years following things on here." was so much better then. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I remember the early days of YouTube as well. I joined YouTube in when it first... Soon after, soon after it started, I, I set up a YouTube account and I started commenting. I didn't upload anything until about 2007. But um, that's when I started a Panmo TV. But I, I did sort of like... Uh, I was like a viewer for a long time. 
And there was these really great people. There was people like Red Phantom, you know, see you on the flip side. He was a great early conspiratorial uh, content creator. And there was these arguments that used to break out. There was this guy, um, he was an IRA supporter. He was American. Um, I'm guessing um, I'm guessing he was Irish-American, probably from Boston or New York or somewhere. He used to sit there with his IRA uniform. And um, he was a member of various Friends of Sinn Féin and various other American uh, Irish Republican movements. And he used to sit there and do videos. And someone, this really posh English guy used to come on and do these reply, these reply videos to him. In those days you could do like reply videos and you just click reply and it would be a reply video. And he'd say, I just wanted to say, fuck you and fuck you again and fuck you again and fuck you and stuff like this. <laughs> these two got into like... It was like a hundred videos long of replies and counter replies, and they was they were saying things that would definitely get would get them banned in five minutes on today's YouTube. But nobody cared because if people didn't like it, they didn't have to watch it. Oh, but it's it's all that I feel really nostalgic for early YouTube. I really did. Even though you could only make videos up to ten minutes long in those days, it was like TikTok now. You know, but it was just such it was such good fun. It was so enjoyable. It really was. Yeah, uh, Mark B says on on video band eight, Rumble Ben, the Google reach of YouTube is the only reason they still have a monopoly. Well, they they fit they they indeed. In fact, if you Google anything these days, um, you know the 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 search engines always they they always dredge up the mainstream stuff first. Even if you, I found this, if I'm trying to search for, for if I'm trying to search for one of my videos, I've, as I've described on previous videos, if I'm trying to search for one of my videos. You know, with a blank browser, without any cookies, not logged in. You know, it's it's really difficult. I end up like I have to. I can put in the exact title of the video, and I have to. It, it, you know, it's not hidden, but you have to scroll down three or four pages to get to it. And what, everything in between is just like mainstream news stories, some of them which are only vaguely relevant. Ah, uh, Mark B says here. I find a good gauge of what people think is my local pub and the local shops. Yes. Mark, why do you think they're trying to shut them down and make you sit at home all day and then go to the supermarket and spend your cashless tokens? That's that's why. Four years ago, I was the lone conspiracy nut, but now things have certainly changed. They can delete, ban, threaten, fine or jail us. But all there are there are too many questions, too many questioning things now. People have always taken free speech for granted in the UK, and trying to take that right away for them will simply not work. Simple as. Exactly, Mark. Mark, this is a good sign. It really is. Despite everything, it's a good sign because they're just they're just displaying. They are displaying their desperation. They've they've really broken cover now, and they're just out in the open. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so thanks. That's good. I'm glad that a lot of people have said this. I mean, you know, it's like that joke. You know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. My pronouns are "told you so." Yeah, have you got that T-shirt with the UFO? "Told you so." That T-shirt. Yeah. Right. Disclosure. City people. End credits. Oh, this is my YouTube version of um, this. This is a. Uh, that was a. This is actually a. Um, yeah. This is a. Uh, this is one of the exopolitics. This is an exopolitics reportage, yeah, one of the exopolitics conference. I think it's the one in Liverpool. Um, Coda. Mitchy Eggloader. Who's Mitchy Eggloader? Is that not Michi Okaku? Mitchy Eggloader. All strolly most. Trickly, trickly how. To the cheese delicatessy up there, you know. Mitchy Eggloader. All strolly much. Strolly most. Trickly, trickly how. To the cheese so, you know, I'm, I I don't understand Coder. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Steiner Schools Coder says here. Despairy to read news articles about Rudolf Reindreels. Chimbo and uh, Rudolf Reindreels. That's a that's a that's something with a red nose. Coder. Hmm. Chimbold treels and nose and glow it there. Yeah, <laughs> Chimbold. That's Christmas, I think. Uh, Turning, turning schoolers from nurt, nurturing places. Turning schoolers from nurturing places. I think that's nursery school, nursery places. All in, in, inspiry boils and gil, gilbs. Gilbs. Yeah, there are Steiner I think it's referring to Steiner schools, I think he means there. 
into production lines for fake fact loaders to remove it's the brain blockers there yes production lines for fake facts to remove the brain blockers yes you know like the old um the old meat grinder in that pink floyd video yeah now everything judgy by crammy infant celebrales with unimaginable statements and unchallenging conspiratorial fact loaders deep folly yeah i find it easier to understand under my knees actually if you just read it quickly and it's sort of and you sort it, it sort of forms into a picture. If it's like, it's like if you if you analyse it too closely and took look at every word, you'd like miss the wood for the trees. Yeah, despairing to read news articles about Rudolph Reindeers, Trimble trees and nose glow it there. Turny schoolers from nursery places, all Insbury boils and girls, boils and girls, boys and girls. Yeah, into production lines for fake fact loaders and remove it. The brain blockers there. Now everything judgy and crammy infant celebrails with unimaginable statements and unchallenging conspiratorial fact lo conspiratorial fact loaders. Deep folly. Yeah, I'm getting you. I'm getting it, Coda. Oh, Oxford May morning 2012, 511 choir singing. Right, this was their first May morning video I did. I know I did one last year. But this is like the first one I did when it was all wet and raining in 2012. I remember that, yes. Proofly posloader that our pridely dignifol can singly the oprail and all things musy. Oh, yes. From Mozarka, Beethoven to Gargling, Ladle and the Chemical Brothers. Oh, the Chemical Brothers, Gargling, Ladle. Beethoven Mozart, yes. This can download from the internet and synchronize with MP3 players of manifold type. It's MP3 players, yeah. From tiny most US Beale stickles, USB sticks, <laughs> and the microscopy iPod shuffet. Hmm. Laptoppers and iPaddles. iPaddles, steep joy. iPaddles, yeah. <laughs> iPads. <laughs> Deep joy, yeah. I mean, it was great. To, it was fun, even though it was raining. I don't know if I'll go this year. I'll pro I probably will. If I'm, I mean, I've done my. I've done a video of it. That's the main thing. All right, guys. And I will go on to the bit shoot comments. I think if I remember, I got quite a lot this year, this time, because Hugo's gone crazy on my. He's gone crazy on my channel. Here we go. Reply to comments ninety three. Um, let's see. Discuss the video. How to store and sort all your photos. I've got, a, I've got an ad. Hang no on a sec, guys. You see, the ads. You get ads even if like you're, you get the ads even if you're not monetized. You know, even if you're not monetized. It's, I think it's bit shoot making money. Uh, Hugo Rune says, "Come and visit Ben. I'll refrain from toking during your visit." Oh look, you can toke as much as you like, mate. Don't worry. Come and visit, please. Oh look, I'll, 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 be, I'll email you about that, isn't it? Um. Hugo says, everyone is suggesting I'm a danger to society. Cannabis, cannabis deaths, zero deaths. Cannabis, zero deaths. Alcohol deaths. I'm drinking Stella. I never get drunk. Just merry. Cheers, my bladder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, Hugo. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll email about that. I'm just, well, I was talking to the someone come, who's going to come with me, and, and, and uh, they suggested, like, when the weather gets warmer. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I will do, Hugo. Do you mind if I don't put a comment on all your everything you've put here because you've got three comments on here so you i think i've put one comments notice and you know that i'm replying to them all at the same time right dom jolly Ooh. and hugo says lol mile mile high city and me thanks man. yes <laughs> that's exactly you hugo definitely we're all here that's a good more ads our plan is on the verge of self mm. Yeah, and Hugo says, Finland, 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 a country where I'd quite like to be. I thought you did go there. You said you were there. Or is this, is there fi is this finally somewhere where you haven't been? Mm. Oh, Woden. Hello, Woden. Woden 20. How do you do, Woden? Nice to see you again. For the King Arthurs, see Alan Wilson and Baron Blackett. As seen on Rich Planet. Yes, indeed. In fact, Woden, I, I really like uh, Richard's interviews with the <coughs> with the forensic historians. They're both both died now, I and mean, Barham died in a very suspicious house fire. And if you if you know from watching Richard's coverage, someone there was a, there was an arson attempt on his house previously, wasn't there? Right here we are, Mark Devlin tour. 
In ancient times, Oops. people knew about the cyclical climate change that occurs mm, every 12 They know years. the kinds of ads I like. <laughs> Some of them do know it. Oh, I'm getting another ad now. Unless, until they retire. Mm. This is Mark Devlin Tour Oxford. Paul M.S. said, take a look at the metal insect clock. Sorry, at the metal insect clock gobbling up time in Cambridge. Locust from the pit, perhaps from Revelations chapter 9. What's this? I'll just Google this, actually. Here we go. Um, Cambridge Insect Clock. What's that? Yeah, Cambridge Insect Clock. Here we go. I can see that there. Um, corpus Clock, known as the Grasshopper Clock. A large sculptural clock. Oh, look, oh my God. This is it. Oh yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I should go and do a tour. Oh, it looks mean. It's like some kind of stinging insect. Like a. Oh, that's a horrible looking thing. That's really. That's really horrible looking. That is, mate. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Um. Uh, hmm. Locust from the pit, perhaps from Revelations chapter nine. It looks like that, doesn't it? It certainly looks very alarming there, Paul. Yeah, it looks like a horrible thing. But yeah, maybe I should go to Cambridge, and it's got its. I bet Cambridge has its own share of the very things that Mark talks about with Oxford, because they're both like elite universities. Maria Wheatley at Avebury. Discuss the video. Oh, I've got an ad. How many people can? Okay, here we go. Uh, Grand, what's this? Grand Turismo. Hmm. <clears throat> Forty-two twenty. Oh right, that's the. I remember that's the round tower. Yeah, the the round tower, the the round, the rotunda I showed you. And Gran Torino, uh, Gran Turismo says reminiscence of the Newport Tower in Rhode Island. Let's have a look. Um, it's, I'll go. I'll, you can have this on when I'm looking for it. Here we go. New Rhode Island, Newport Tower, Rhode Island. Oh yeah, what's this? Yeah. Oh, I th I've heard about this. Yes. It's a it's located at Chiro Park, Newport, Rhode Island, USA. Windmill. Windmill built in the 17th century. Received attention due to speculation it's actually several centuries older and thus would, would thus represent evidence of pre-Columbian transatlantic contact. Carbon dating shows this belief to be incorrect. I wonder what Maria thinks about this. I bet she's been there. I bet she's been here. Oh, they've got a fence around it so we can't get hold of it. Oh, wow. That'd be a good place to visit, wouldn't it? They've got a fence. I'd be tempted to sneak over that fence. I really would. I'd be very tempted to sneak over that fence. All oh, right, so that's yeah, it. It is reminiscent. I mean, it does look like a bit like it, you know. It, it has that kind of look to it, doesn't it? Um, Look up Jim Egan, Newport Tower Museum on YouTube. A very good history of the old stone tower built for time recording using camera obscura. There are many similar holes in the wall. All right, so the, the holes in the wall are like a time device. Jim Egan. Let's have a, let's look him up. Look him up on YouTube. Because I wonder if, if that could be... Because if it's evidence there's like pre-Columbian contact with the, with the New World... Jim Egan, Newport, New, I'll put Newport Tower. Here, here it is, look, um, here it is, yes, I see it, here we go. This guy. Let's go see this beautiful tower, which is only 50 steps across the street from the Newport Tower Museum. And, and look at this beautiful thing. Oh, look, yeah, there it is. Tower. Rock right there. And then early night on the exterior but look uh, a lot of people suggest well that's a keystone jim that's part of the yeah. it looks like these flat stones it's almost like roman it's almost like roman a roman construction could that is that really a, a 17th century windmill or is there more to it than that yeah i just wonder thanks very much uh, mr turismo mr uh, gran turismo thank you jim egan newport town museum on youtube a very local history of the old stone tower built for time recording using camera obscura right thanks i mean there's obviously there's there's more to i mean obviously i don't 
it could be that that rotunda there is, is similar. I mean, it could be for pigeons or, you know, a dove load or whatever it's called. Or it could be something else. Yeah, I bet Maria's been there. She's probably been to that place. Okay, and now and then finally, videos band eight. There we go. All right, discuss the video. Just wait for the ads to clear. You know, I'm actually pleased that Bitshoot have a have a have a work I've had a video band. have a like a finan a working financial model. Yeah, um, that allows them to add. Right, and here we have Sweeps Fox, who says here. Thumbs up, Ben. YouTube and other platforms continue bannering, censoring free speech. It all started long ago, really. But it's possible to take a good, ma a good aim at the fairly recent inclusion of politically correct introductions to our into our vocabulary. This term by itself signals an assault on free speech. Politically correct was the surrender to power and control over free speech is noteworthy. But so many people continue to use this politically correct BS as if it somehow implies a good thing instead of being an outright banning of anything the agenda groups consider bad for them. Wake up, folks. Yeah, well said, Sweeps. Yes. Um, yeah, as I said, we were talking earlier, reminiscing about the early YouTube and how fun it was. But, yeah, the it's got worse. And indeed, this, this Orwellian control of language is far worse than I've ever remembered it before. You know, the, the, there's terms you can use. I mean, it's like, what's his name? Um... Benedict Cumberbatch, the actor, he had to he had to make a big public apology because he said coloured actors, and he should have said actors of colour, and he 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 did a massive mea culpa, you know. He said, "I apologise, and I apologise again, and I apologise again." He didn't say anything rude. He didn't call people, um, he didn't call people like abusive racial slurs. He just said coloured actors. He did this massive apology, and there was this big Twitter storm about it. Clown world, man. Clown world. But it's all deliberate. As you say, Sweeps, it's deliberate. It's been engineered by the government. It's an assault on our minds. It's an assault on, on the sanctity of our thought. Yeah, absolutely. Wake up, folks. Okay, I'm just going to go through, I'm gonna go through the, the comment notifications now. Um, there we go. So what I'll do is I'll just... Just scroll down. The comment should have been posted since the last comments reply video, and um, this is good because Ray now is bit shoot. It's going, it's going, it's going really going up, up, up. It really is. Odyssey, Odyssey is a bit on shaky ground. I know. All oh, right, here we are. MH370, ten years on. We got Hugo Rune, who says here, discuss this video. Uh, yes, I have a few spliffs. But it doesn't make me stupid. I challenge you to show it does. Come on, Ben. Show me how my use of cannabis makes there me stupid or gullible. I don't, Hugo. Thermal, light, I don't, Hugo. I don't. I don't say that. I never said that. Come visit me. Help ch challenge the law. It's my medication, capitals. You're a good man, Ben. But show me that I'm, that I'm stoned and stupid. Did I say that? Because if I did, I'm very sorry. I really am. I didn't mean it. Hmm. <clears throat> And then, oh, we got to uh, Kendo. I, I actually answered that in the last reply to comments video. So there's that one there. So that's that done. Um, all right, M uh, Hugo Room MH370 Vigil. He puts on the uh, he did he put one on the other MH370 video that I did. Discuss the video. Whoops. And he's re he repeats here. Catastrophic climate changes on our Earth occur cyclically once every twelve thousand years. So I've got a lot of ads. I'm glad I say I'm glad that he, I'm glad that Bitshoot are um, are doing this. I'm glad that Bitshoot have this funding model now that works. It's viable. Finland, 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 the country where I'd quite like to be. But if you be, don't tell me you've never been there. Isn't it, it's not possible? I've been somewhere where you haven't. It's not possible because you've been over the whole world. Hugo Rune says here hey ben hey yes spliffs in the tin again oh definitely good for you mate good for you i'm sorry I mean, you may not have made this live it was sort of my matinee video which i don't often do but it was i wanted to do a video at the same time as it all as i wanted to do a video at the same time that um the um, it's the 10 years to the moment that it all happened reply to comments 92 all right he's an old one hugo rune says here
Conspiracies um, government. Says here. Six minutes onwards. Me in the army sm- re- me in the army smoking cannabis. I spent all my free time in Arnhem Holland where I had friends. It's a nice place, mate. I had um, I had family there. Of course it was not accepted by the army, but stuff them. Of course I kept it quiet, but in the end I quit the army and travelled the world. You, you, you know, I mean, I think these days, Hugo, they give you urine tests. I mean, they, I know they do that in certain big corporations. They probably do it in the military. <clears throat> to just see if you're taking drugs. And travelled the world. Installing as ANS, ANSCAN in Hawaii for two months. I think that's some electronic communications, isn't it? Then six months on Norfolk Island, where cannabis grew wild. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, <laughs> I bet you'd love to go and live there. That's your, that's your, that's your shire, that is, isn't it? They called me the Pakaloko kid in uh, in Hawaii because I was always buying local weed. Then on Norfolk Island, six months when it was free. Now Germany's going to legalise cam- cannabis very soon to be the same as Holland. Good post, Ben. Thanks, Hugo. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, um, it's funny. I kind of wondering if if they're actually watching your stuff, Hugo. They're watching your you in the news. Because it does seem to sort of fit when exactly when... seems these things happen exactly when you, you appear in the news about it or the police go around your house. All right, so I'll, uh, Co- Sweeps has commented on my channels... on, on his, Sorry, on the videos he made on his channels, which is cool. Because he, he, he makes lots of interesting sort of news videos and current affairs videos. <sighs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Every time, I'm nearly, I'm nearly finished now. <coughs> I've got, just got Odyssey and Rumble to do. <coughs> Hmm. Scrolling down to the bottom, see what's there for these notifications. All ah, right, oh, that's uh, sweeps again. That's because I get notifications for comments that I post on other people's videos as well. Hmm. That's it. I think. Yep, that's it. So um, I'll now go back to the top. I'll click mark all as red. There we go. I'll go to well, I'm, well, that'll take a while to process. I'm going to go to Odyssey now. Notifications right now. There's, as I know, there's an easier way to do this. Um, all right, notice. So I simply go to uh, comments. I, get, I choose comments specifically, and I now have uh, Maria Wheatley Avery. Actually, I'll um, hmm, I'll here we go. Here we go, I'll just go. Here we go, Maria Wheatley Have Brain. Some people are very, Columbia, when it, it came down. Crack. Some people are very sort of like black pilled, I must say, over um right delete all. I'm just I'm just deleting all of that's it. From that's all the comments deleted from BitChute. Now I must say some people are very black pilled over <coughs> Odyssey, they all keep thinking it's about to disappear. I don't know if that's true or not, but you keeping going on about it like Millennial Woes does doesn't help. It doesn't Ivan Kozidzia says here, interesting video. Can you get a windshield for the microphone, though? Try listening back around 30 minutes. You'll hear what I mean. I, I know. I, Ivan, I'm sorry. I, I did try to minimise wind noise, but I will I will look into getting like a, a windshield, getting a getting a detachable mic with a, with a windshield on it. Right, Sibian Dreams, video band 8. This is Sib- S- sorry, Sibian Dreams. Sibian Dreams. Yes, yeah, got to got to pronounce that properly. And I've had a video ban. Sibian Dream says, YouTube will do as it pleases, as long as there are millions who cling to it, who cling to it and upload the bugger no matter what. Um, well, there will always be people who do that, Sibian. Yes, they will just cling to it and upload bugger no matter what. Because for some people, that's all they want for social media for. Those people, I think, you know, you're not going to reach them no matter what you do. So you you could have complete free reign of YouTube, and they will just they will just avoid your uploads, and, and the algorithm, their own algorithms, will like feed their own shit back to them. You can't you know you can't reach people. I don't like it any more than you, man, as the saying goes. Mark Devlin, tour of Oxford, and we have here, uh, Cybian Dreams again, who says. Very interesting. It leaves me with the impression Oxford is a creepy place. I wouldn't necessarily want to visit. Um, I think, actually, Sibiant, it is creepy in a way, but it's, it's worth visiting. In daylight hours, it's actually quite 
it can be quite pleasant and it's interesting stuff there and just you know you do some protection spells you'll be fine I have some connection to Oxfordshire. My dad was born in Enston and his parents were both from Chipping Norton. My granddad worked for a time at the Cowley Car Factory when it was still the Morris. <laughs> Morris Motors, yeah. Before being transferred to Coventry where they opened a factory to make car engines. Yeah, that was the uh, British Leyland, yeah. I identify with the contrast Mark draws between the 90s and the present time. I think so, yes, Sybin, yeah. It's interesting, You, I think you're American, aren't you? But you, you obviously have family. You have a family connection. You have family um, background here in, in England. In, in fact, exactly where I am. Yeah. Although ironically, I'm not actually an Oxford man by, by nurture. I actually come from West Wales. I moved to Oxford, so I'm an expat. But yeah, like yourself, I'm, but I'm I I I immigrated whereas you emigrated. Okay. So now we have replied to comments ninety three. It's Sibian Dreams again. Who says? Hmm. Sibian Dreams stream says the sole foundation is like a stick of Blackpool rock with the word gatekeepers running all the way through it oh dear oh um now I, I don't go along I'm, I'm afraid I don't go along with that idea at all I mean I know there are gatekeepers I know there are shills but no nah, I mean I, th I think I think this see I'm, I don't go along with this idea this is just some kind of limited hangout the whole modern David Grush, Lou Elizondo thing. I think there's something genuine behind it. I really do. As I explained in several of my videos. Oh, yeah, here we go. Right. And now we have Sibian Dreams on Dom Jolly Conspiracy Show, who says here... Who says here... Um, there is a conspiracy theory that pigeons are fake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, I think we can safely assume it's proof. <laughs> Let's have a look. Pigeons, are, pigeons aren't real. Do oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I've been looking for. Pigeons aren't real. Government drones. <laughs> pigeons are working as biotech spies for the government. <laughs> Loaded with surveillance technology. The pigeons spy on the public, collecting your private data. <laughs> Oh, my God, they got a microphone and camera. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Latest news, merch. Oh, you can get Pigeons Aren't Real merch. <laughs> that reminds me of the, the uh, Cows Are Killers thing that Dom Jolly does. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sib Sibian Dreams, much appreciated. All right, and I think we've now got to the Paper Beats Rock. Yeah, I think I've answered all the comments on this particular video. Yeah, I have. Yes, I have. Right, okay. So that is Odyssey done, I believe. That should be Odyssey done. So now we'll go to Rumble. Rumble, Rumble, Rumble. What do we have on Rumble? All right, here we go. So I'll simply go, I'll go to comments and notifications. Oh, I've got a new one. All right. Oh, Mark B. Is oh, good. Mark B. has started following my channel. Thank you very much, Mark B. This is while, while we've been on the air. Mark B. And here we are. I'll follow him as well. This is Mark B.'s channel on Rumble. Good job you're on Rumble, Mark, because honestly, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, you've got to, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to, you can't put all your eggs in one basket when you're on uh, when you're on you on social media these days on you can't put all your eggs in the mainstream basket these days so um, thanks mark b for following me and sweep sweeps fox has commented on uh, real zombies right here we go um and i'll put in the now with uh, we could reply, i've got to add lots of random text because um because unfortunately Rumble will not allow you to post the same comment even on the same platform twice, not just the same video like uh, you, Odyssey. YouTube and other platforms continue banning and censoring free speech and free expression. Oh, right, oh, Sweeps has actually posted the same comment he posted on BitChute, and I agree with him totally about, about political correctness and things like that. So thanks very much, Sweeps. That's absolutely right. Um, oops. Loading notifications. The X series. Ah, oh, the X series is back. The X series says, "Hello, Ben." All right, so here we are. So I'll just put in a comment here, and I'll read. I'll put the comment, the reply tag first, then I'll start reading. Then I'll start reading. Um, 
the X series here. Please give me your expert opinion about the fact that the fas hashtag fascist death cult, hashtag black magicians have been hashtag covertly collecting starseed DNA for their different nefarious and genocidal agendas for millennia. I know you personally know Maria Wheatley. Could you please, please convey all the information in this comment reply to her? I am a fan of Maria. UFO secrets are sacred feminine X chromosomes, sacred feminine mitochondrial DNA. Dr. Stephen Greer, Star Seeds, UFO Secrets Part 1. I think I've seen this one. Um, let's just leave some videos that he's put here on here. Um, oh no, have I not seen this one? Oh, it's a 15 minute video by the X series. Oh, have you seen this one? I think I might have seen this one. I don't think I have. No, because I put a comment on it and it's not on there. Um, so this maybe is... But I'll, I'll have a read of that. I'll have a watch of that. Thanks, X series. I will have a watch of that. And there's this one here. Um, breaking news. Black budget... budget pro, black budget... Ro sorry, rogue black budget programs. That will shock you. Let's have a look. This is on YouTube. Oh, I have seen this, I think. Hello, what suckers? It's Andy here. And yes... Yeah, I think I've seen this one. Um, I'll just show you a snip of it. It's, the ads are just clearing. Here we go. I think, oh, this is, um, this one is walking through the park with Blake, isn't it? Yeah, with Blake Cousins from Third Phase. Uh, into the this is his royal imperial greerness. Yes, praise the Messiah. There he is. Yes, indeed. And um, what's this nice recommended... Recommends genetic tests to prevent newborn babies going deaf. What's this? Mm. Nice recommends genetic tests to prevent newborn babies going deaf. A genetic test to establish if a newborn baby is vulnerable to deafness. Right. I don't know enough. I have to re have a read through that. I mean, obviously, if you can prevent someone going deaf, that's good, you know, but. Um, my opinion on those things, I'll have to tell you, because X series, you, pre you presented me with some pl completely new material here, which I'll have to go through when I finish recording this this video, which I will do so. All right. Okay. All right. Sulis triple seven says on um, any any relation to Minerva. Says on the Welsh monolith. Was it UFOs or hail? Why? Oh, this is Gary Jones. All right. This is on a. This is on another video. Sorry, this is not on one of my videos. That's on Gary Jones's video. Sweeps Fox commented on Dom Jolly. Let's have a look here. Sweeps. On my Dom Jolly video. Alright, firstly I had a right, I had a text comment from Ghoul Gowie talking about something. I mean this is not I won't actually go through this on in the video because but um Gul Gary complained that there was a problem with buying the, the Roswell books in Australia, and I have been addressing that. I've been talking about that on a Panmo radio. I've been in touch with several people about that, and I'm trying to sort it out. Definitely. But we have Sweeps Fox, who says here... What a bunch! What a bunch of con. Hang on, sorry, oh dear, I've, got, I've, I've still got the. So I've still got the URL that I got from old um, X series. There, here we go. So some random tax. There we go. Um, whole bunch of conspiracies covered here, mate. Good stuff. Chalking this up to your inimitable way. That was fun. Patter and sharing. You've done. Keep it coming. Gave you a thumbs up. We'll give you the pat on the back when running into you next. Thanks, sweeps. Thank you very much. We're good to see you again sometime. I'm sure our paths will cross on the in the conference sphere. But I'm glad you enjoyed that, mate. Thank you. That was um. Good fun. That was good fun. I'm glad I went to the Dom Jolly thing. It was good fun. Okay. Um, Ghoul Gowie, Lucy, Lucy Samoyed is following my channel, and N Roma is following my channel. I think I've already checked these people out. I have. Thank you very much for the following my channel on Rumble. Johnny Webb, thank you very much. Sinus, Sinus Wave, that's a good name. Sweet. All right. Now, um, I think this maybe this is a comment on, I think I might have reached the Let's have a look. Yeah, this is this is the this is my um, video called "R.I.P. UFOs." A reply to Steve mumbling, and I've answered those comments. So that's the end of Rumble. So that's it, basically. We just go back to YouTube now, and I just simply refresh YouTube. Well, I've kind of done it anyway because um, I opened that thing about the tower, the Newport Tower, and then I'll just go to notifications that have come up since the. 
since the last video. And we've got John Nolan. Here, fear you, Ben. <laughs> All right. John, I'll, uh, thank you very much, John. I'll put like a little... There's my... Uh, there's the thing there. So you, I'll answer that comment soon. Um, let's look scrolling down. Oh, Slap Tam's uploaded again. Brilliant. Slap Tam does some brilliant ghost videos and stuff like that. All right. And that's it, I think. Yes. That is the end. That is it. That is the proverbial it. So, uh, well, thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much for all those comments. It's been really, really great. And um, I will be... Um, there will be another video coming soon. And I think we need to move on with some of the watch parties that I started and never finished. So we'll do that. Someone suggested a new watch party for the the book by Mitch album, um, The Five People You Meet in Heaven and the accompanying movie. I think that's a good idea. Um, I think that's what it was said to me in Unwinnies by Coda, but I think um, that's the video we're talking about. And um, what else is happening? Um, just look at my diary quickly. I'm, I'm not sh there's There's other things coming to... I am going to be speaking at another couple of events. And I'm planning another couple of trips, so uh, please stay tuned for that. And um, there may well... There'll probably be something we can do a live stream about at some point, because... A lot's going on in the world. There was that horrible new hate crimes law introduced in Scotland on April the 1st, and what a joke that was. And, of course, uh, there's, um, it looks like Israel's going to war with Iran, which is going to be very nasty. Yeah. But anyway, thank you all of you for, 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 for commenting. Everyone who's left a comment, they've been great. Obviously, without you, there'd be no reply to comments video, obviously. And so I appreciate every comment I've had. Much appreciated. A Panmo TV will return very soon. Thank you for watching. Hospital Porters, pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Conspiracies, government cover-ups, Earth mysteries, monster cryptids, psyops, saucers and black triangles, huh, Panmo?